the cards here. We that's our stick. Well, I went ahead and um, plussed up all my stats on my own form since you sent it in Word, so I've uh, changed all of it. So I'm Will's not there, so you're talking to yourself. That's yeah, fine. I'm talking to you guys. Oh, <laughs> you're like I'm getting it on the record. <laughs> on the record, hey, you guys heard me say it, right? So, so uh, Ashley and Chad, if you take a look, I have the Tim head, which is the Tim loves good critical mm -hmm. head, and then because of Tim, I have this no just no DM head that I have to use. You know, with, uh, that's a uh, the crazy un uh, Bill doesn't play anymore, picking his nose. No. When Jay doesn't like you to be creative and foil his <laughs> yeah plan, creative, he says no. <laughs> And then I have to go, just no. Why? Just no. Just no, because he's mean. <laughs> yeah, I am mean and a jerk. That's Actually, it. Actually, you probably me. picked that up already. Yeah, I am. I'm an awful, I'm an awful, I'm an awful he's human mean. being. Oh, I didn't say that. I think I met someone different at Gary Con. <laughs> I oh, met this yeah. really nice person. <laughs> well, he is nicer to other, you know, the people other than his own players. Oh, he's one of those. Well, I've, I've had to deal with you guys for 44 years, so, you don't, I mean, my gosh. You mean you've had the privilege? Yes, that's of right. Gaming with us for forty-four years. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I've known you since you were what thirteen. Yeah. Oh my God, that's how old we are. Yeah. I actually, I will take credit for most of Jay's trauma. Yes, exactly. You have. You've done game trauma. Yeah, absolutely. Game trauma. Game trauma. Gonna rehash that uh, first conversation you had with Tim. I think you brought it up once before. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, I get in the car. Uh, uh, I think we're going to Jack and F's, right, in Haddonfield. Uh, yeah. Walt, myself, and you, and I think uh, was your dad. No, your uncle Steve was driving. You, Probably, your, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think your dad went. And uh, get in the car, and the first thing Tim ever said to me. This is old school. Remember, one he's the only thing out. So could could a mage with a uh, a dagger attack twice because the speed factor is only two? I'm looking at him and like, oh my god, that's the first. Yeah. Thing, that's the first thing he ever said to me. <laughs> Very first like, words. Yeah, but the thing is, it is by far the love after that. speed factor out of anything. Yeah. I mean, by a huge margin. Yeah, now yeah. you're, you got to come at this story from the other angle. So, let's take Tim's angle on this. Tim is in the backseat of this car, and this guy gets in, and he looks at him, and the first thing that comes to his mind is. I bet he knows or has an opinion on. Yeah, yeah. this four guy. I, or, or, or maybe I'm thinking, hey, I wonder if I could stab this guy. <laughs> guy, you mean a 14-year-old, right? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't really crossing my mind. But I was probably arguing the point with somebody else, and then you just joined in, and I just tried to get you on my team, and you failed me. Well, yeah, that wasn't – I always – uh, this, yeah, the uh, ab abusive system rules has uh, has uh, led me to become the DM I am today. So well, it, it's it's there's a tension between the abstractness of a game system. That's true. And the kind of reality. So there's a little bit of a tension there. It's like, yes. are you really getting hit when you take damage from a long sword? No, hit points are the ability to hit points correct. are technically correct. the ability correct. to avoid damage. That's what right. hit points dagger, are. When you look at the speed factor, it's like it's so oh, fast. My gosh is you know so anyway that's the tension i know the i know goes on. <laughs> it goes on it's a, a 44 there is a tension frick, there 44 um, freaking years it goes on and, i'm used uh, i'm used to it Brits have solved this solved the problem it's all good we got some good stories for all the decades we've been playing so i'll cut these short by the way these ads so i hope everyone's well today thank you for coming on first of many guest dm spots DM slash GM spots. I got two oh, others. Many? We gotta have a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, I got I got William. Uh, oh. After Will, I got. Oh, yeah, sure. uh, I got Curtis, and then I got uh, Bones uh, in May. I got Curtis for a Champions game in two weeks, and I got Bones in May so far. So, yep, I'm gonna keep it keep on opening it up. Saturday mornings are the best to do. What about? I need a June. What was that? How about June? What about June? June, I'm away, but dude, I'm on vacation two Saturdays in June, the 15th through the 20th. Well, there's other Saturdays, right? Well, there is, yeah. I just haven't scheduled you just anything. Gotta, you got to figure out how to do the, uh, the the technical stuff, Tim. That's all. And just go use his basement while he's not oh, home. Oh, my word. <laughs> Tim will be in my basement, him and his son, next Saturday for the Battletech game. There you go. Yeah. The invasion, Corey. I have two um, questions about Please. my character. I have um, two answers. Okay, do like what is my school like? What do, 
which kind of druid am I? Oh, oh, uh, you're a druid. Uh, it's the, uh, uh, the the ones that are connected to the land. So you're swamp druid. So you're, uh, I think that's druid. Of Crossing the, land the void. Or something. Okay. Beyond the wall of worlds. <laughs> okay. Along the arc of time. And then the other well, one is, I don't know what place, I have proficiency in. I have a proficiency bonus, but I don't know which ones that apply. There is light. Anything that's listed should be. Say that there are two sides any listed skills is that already yep. um, added in? For a law so to those did I leave out your skills? Skills? Freedom. Evil you gave me. You told me what knows. I get pluses in. Good. Yeah. But you didn't We're say. It. And those in the middle? I wouldn't say. They are what? I left it up to actually to choose her own skills. Codex Infernum and the Codex Exalted. Yeah. Technically, what was supposed to happen there, actually, is there was supposed to be a mission to skill. From right the farthest there. reaches of the heavens. Oh, no, there they are. Your there, skills are down skills, here. skills, but it doesn't yep. say how we got there. <laughs> yeah, these are the ones that you have. If you if you take a look, those all these ones that are down here, those are actually ones that you're proficient. Oh, and, okay. I fa and I factored in all the bonuses onto it already. So I did do it. I just didn't have it where I thought I did. <laughs> okay, okay. So, those are ones that you are proficient in. You got it. Um... Does that mean I have other skills that I'm not proficient in that I get bonuses? Uh, you're, you're you're a druid. I mean, okay, based on my if you points. do something druidy, we can druidy. We can hook you up with a with a bonus. <laughs> We're good with that. Okay. I'm extremely fast and loose with how I DM. So if it's not concrete, you know, and written on your sheet, it, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> we can okay. we can work no, with just, it. Okay. No, I just I just want to make sure I I understood how to read it. No, no, I totally understand. And, and Will, I, I, I put this on the record that after you sent me my character sheet, I totally edited it and upgraded everything. So Yeah. Yeah, he told the chat, so yeah. it's... Yeah. So it's that way it's so official. Now. It's official it, It's Tim. You know that, Will, what you're getting into. That's good, though. That's 100% good. I'm yeah, good with that. You know exactly what you're getting into. We went over the final... We finalized the spells last night. So. Damn, you guys were talking last night? That scares me. Well, I asked them, what does it take to get your character? What, what do I have to pay to get hey, your Courtney. character? Hey, Courtney. I was plotting I, on your character, Jay. I told him yeah. that there is Dude, no... Dude, you can plot on my character all you want, man. In uh, Willow Isle. My character's yeah. lawful good. He's as good as dead as it is anyway. No way, man. I don't like that attitude. <laughs> Come on. He's going to end up doing He's something. going to be a beacon for this. Maybe he's leading the way to justice. And this is going to be interesting. I think this is the first uh, 5e Guardian played, Will, that you know of? Uh, I, I want to say I played one sometime, but I don't think it was on the stream now that I'm thinking about it. So, right. yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Such a great one. Which it, can, which it can still be found at a DM Guild on the like three things I posted on there before right. I quit posting stuff in the DM Guild. I got to turn this shit down. Man, it's so freaking loud. Or I'm just getting old. I can't hear anything. It's probably what? That. Nothing. <laughs> Coco is, uh, is is. Please tell me Chuck's playing this morning. And uh, uh, Coco, uh, Ashley told me that the th uh, the thing with uh, Guild Spear is not streamed, so I can't read into you if it's not live. It's uh, off. It's off. Off stream. So just no let point. me know. I right. mean, if it's live, they should have told me because I create the events in Discord and I didn't create an event for that. <laughs> TLG is live. <laughs> TLG is on right now. Wow. Oh. Chuck's on. He is yeah. on. It's not. It's not yeah. updating with me. All right. Cool. It's, uh, it's uh, that's funny because it doesn't. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Here. I'm just gonna. Look. Yeah. It didn't refresh. He's at the opening screens right now. All right. Good. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's why. Okay. Good. All right, Chuck. I'm gonna <laughs> lurk there. Let me just do that real quick. Lurk, lurk, lurk. All right, good. All right. Up one, two on the laptop. It's my whistle. Yeah, it's a shame it's at the exact same time, but there's not much I can do about that. All right, entry screen. Boom. Okay. So, welcome everyone. Hope you can hear me on, on, on chat. I didn't even check. Sound check. Please tell me you guys can hear me on, on Twitch. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I forgot to check. They probably can hear me. 
You're good. I heard it. Uh, thanks. All right. First in many of guest DM sessions on the channel this year. I'm really excited. I got the idea of Gary Khan from a couple people. Don't say who. So, but it was it's a genius idea. So I'd love uh, I love doing this, spreading things up. What's up, Greg? Got with some warlocks. Good to see you. Get ready for a little different style. So the only other 5e person we ever had on Tim was. Uh, was uh, Brian? Remember, like, that, but that was like three, four years ago. It was ages ago, yeah. But I played Five E with my son with a, at a, a youth group that was that was running a Five E game. And my you son said had you a, played my, six times, Jay. Yeah. My son had a character named <laughs> Dirk Savage. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah. B and my character, my character's name it's was Whole Pot. And nobody got it. Did and no one got it but the old people. Pol Pot? No way. Yeah. Oh Pol my god. Pot, but like P O L E. What's pot. wrong with you? It's well, spelled he was differently. a former racketeer. You're, you're freaking crazy, dude. All right, it's uh, he dominated. It's all right. We got Ashley here. I, uh, she knows the rules, right? Yeah. So, I'm gonna, <laughs> so when I so when I mess up. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's the thing is like normally I like to do it with people that don't know Fabi, so then they don't point out everything I do wrong. Nah, well, will rule well, number come one. On, man. That's rule right. Number rule one. number one, DM's caveat, right? If I say this is the rule now, that's the rule, right? That's the rule. For that moment. <laughs> We're going to have fun this morning. morning. Look, it's not 9 o'clock. Remember, we started at 9. But we started at 10 this morning. Uh, so good morning to I everyone. Thank you all for the support. I know more people will be rolling in. Uh, the first in many of 5E or multiple other channel types or multiple other game systems, uh, guest DMs. They can play whatever they want. Uh, when I invite them in, and I'm um, really excited. Let's uh, introduce everyone. Hey, what's up, Yav? Um, starting with, we'll do the DM last, because then he can talk about the system and everything you uh, you do, Will. And I, got, um, you know, we'll we'll go from there. We'll start ladies first, of course. Ashley, Mister Muse, th welcome back. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. Um, hey everybody, I'm Ashley, also known as Minnesota Muse. Uh, you can find me over at Guild Superior on Tuesdays for Heroes of Greyhawk, or Thursday I'm DMing a campaign, The Undying Sky. So uh, come by and check that out. Um, they are 5e campaigns as well. Uh, Thursday is an Oops All Warlocks campaign, so <laughs> I'm very proud of that. It's a good time. Um, Let's see. Uh, I am playing for you uh, tonight or to this morning. God, I always play in the night. Um, <laughs> Fen Underfoot, a halfling lotus den druid. Nice. I wish I knew what that meant in five E. It's gonna be awesome. I know it's going through your head right now. Anyway, you're just going. Halflings can't be druids. <laughs> What's the character's name? Uh, she is Fen Underfoot. Yes, she's not a native to to Willow Isle. Oh, oh, an outsider. Uh oh, I don't know about that. Well, we'll see. Well, awesome, see. Ashley. Well, welcome back, and thank you uh, for coming on and uh, joining us in this event. Really excited about uh, seeing how seeing how this goes. Uh, playing a little di bit of a different system and exposing everyone to uh, Greyhawk in another another aspect, which is wonderful and a new setting. Brand new setting. We'll talk about that in a second with Will. So thank you. Uh, Alex Antiquitous. Hello, my name is Alex Antiquitous, and today I will be playing Luciano P. Whispermouse, a halfling whistle bard. Uh, you may be familiar with Luciano's cousin Fabio, Fabio, uh, who made the Butter Not Butter product for the halfling community. <laughs> Um, other than that, uh, Luciano <laughs> is looking forward to leading his party to many victories. Well, also not a Willow Isle native. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh my god! There's a couple. There's a couple. <laughs> I'm helping expand my cousin's product. Well, of you course. have to understand it's with the type of character classes, some require to have a different type of backstory to bring him into the story okay you know? no problem <laughs> awesome it's good alex good to see you here uh playing i appreciate it uh you coming on great to play with you guys alex was like the ultimate trooper uh 
um, at Gary Khan. So he did a, he did a lot. I mean, he's up there with Brett and, uh, and Curtis on the level of uh, volunteerism. Or, when I first, when I first <laughs> ran into to Alex there, he was holding the sign at for the back of the line. This is the back of the line. That's when I first ran into him. I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> With a can of beer and a book in my hand at the same yeah, time. Exactly, yeah. which people gave yeah. you, right, for doing that. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. I told you, you need to know how to cheat on that line next year. <laughs> we, all right, there's ways. You need Ed Greenwood to give people back massages and you can get anything you want. So yeah, they're pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta say, that's right. You got one live on the stream. That's true. <laughs> All right, the next person needs no introduction, unfortunately, or fortunately for the world, and that's the ever mysterious Tim. What's up, dude? Good morning. I this this game started so late in the morning, I almost forgot we had a game. Wow. Because I right. normally start at five or six, but yeah. that's fine. <laughs> Today I'm playing Philip the Dancer, Frog Pedal. His nickname is the Dancer because he just likes to get down that way. Yeah. He. And the swamp are almost one. He has swamp water in his blood. Now, here's the, th here's the thing, Tim, not to interrupt, but you know we have to do a D20 roll to see how good of a dancer you are right at the That's game. fine. The higher, the, the higher your number, the better the dancer you are. And I trust you to tell us. Well, I'm not really sure that he's – I don't <laughs> think that's the kind of dancing we're talking about. Oh, well, still, I want to roll. <laughs> All right. Right now? Yeah, give it to me right now. Um, uh, twenty. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I'm gonna give him some. Uh, <laughs> sixteen. Bardic inspiration. <laughs> sixteen. 16. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, that's good. That's a good number. Okay, continue. Sorry to interrupt. All right. Sorry. Yes. He's got swamp in his blood, and he could see that he was going to be kind of stuck in a rut. So he reached out to the spirit of the swamp, old Boa the giant constrictor that circles the world and guards the swamp. And he made a pact. And now he's got the swamp's power, the power of old Boa. That's you can of... see old Boa around us if you open your eyes to his power. That's true. And I have a cute little pet named Daphne, a little teeny mini dragon. Daphne? You named it yes. Daphne? Is that a Scooby-Doo Daphne or... or... It's a Will named the dragon okay. Daphne Daphne. All right, that's cool. I like that. Will, does she oh. talk? Of course she talks. <laughs> okay. Be an Did you not go wow. back onto your character sheet? I, I saw that, but I wasn't sure. So Okay, go to your character sheet. No, no, I know it says it. I know. <laughs> Did you read her personality? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, hey. okay, all right, all right. Now feel free to interject and talk for Daphne as well. I mean, yes. I can talk Daphne for her. Daphne is, but, you know. <clears throat> she's, she's a little annoyed right now because this is taking too long. <laughs> Said, Come I understand. On. And so I'm going to throw her a dragonfly to go eat or something. So anyway, I'm a warlock of the old boa, the spirit of the swamp. That's scary. But it's going to be fun. So looking forward to the experiences here. Uh, wow. Right, I'll go next. So we'll, have, we'll go last. So a rare play for me in 5e. Marin Big Jim Mudfoot. Halfling Guardian, which is a 1E old school class out of the Dragon Magazine I use in my game a lot. Uh, and this is the 5E conversion that Will did. And if we want, if you all, and I'll, I'll shout this out, if you want all this information for free, here's the village of Willow Isle, right? And, uh, and it's a great reference. Uh, all done. Um, wonderful. I mean, it is, it is, what is it? 75 pages of the setting. And we'll talk about it a little bit more, including the guardian class. Uh, let me make sure I have the right, you know, I got Will did Jim 500 Jim sh freaking shout outs. There you go. There's, there's Will's Patreon. So go, go there and check it out. It's awesome. So, uh, and Will, to that. Big yeah. Jim's nickname that he doesn't know about is dumb, big, J dumb Jim. Should we roll dice to see how no, dumb it was? It's, it's <laughs> big Jim Dales. And if you get that joke, then you get a regular hero point. Mm. Big, yes. Are you allowed to give those? Uh, there are regulars. Yeah. It's just like your rules. Ten regulars is a special. So yeah, every hundreds, good. every hundred cheer or uh, every ten thousand is a regular. All right, so you know there are those. I need a roll deck for my shouts. Yeah, I got about. I think I have about two hundred shout outs on my stream deck. It's ridiculous, Ooh. but but welcome, everyone. Will take it away as to what you want to discuss ahead of time and start us up. Well, I won't get into too much about me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm a 
will uh giant stomp Dvorak. i write i have a patreon i publish um uh, uh, uh adventures for uh technically greyhawk there's ip stripped out um most so uh Mostly. you can find those on drive through rpg that's all under wicked studios uh there's the wicked studios facebook page do i have anything else that's really worth mentioning not really i made a big mistake and i don't know why i put down troller game giveaways but uh we got all these will publications raven's rook the dragon's horde adventure these heroes of a dark past tomb of Zhang the horrific and the mermaid's blessing. Winner, first winner will get their choice of the two of these. Okay, there All you right. go. All right. Second winner, we'll do a troller game ten dollar gift certificate. We get a hype train. Oh, look at that, Troy. Troy's cracking up. We get over level three. I'll, I'll triple it. We'll do three giveaways. So, yeah. Awesome. Excellent. Yep, man. All right, kick, take it away. All right, let's go ahead Thanks, and take Troy. it away. First thing we need is I need one of you guys to roll me a d4 so we can find out what time of year. It is here in the Rushmore Swamps. One. You rolled a one? Oh, Jay. It's summer. <laughs> so it's hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's hot. Okay. All right. Let me just double check what we got Old here. Old Boa loves the hot weather. Okay. So basically, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up. This is like mechanical stuff, but I'm just letting you know so that you're, you're it's, it's, it's there. You understand what's going on. Okay. Um, because it is summertime, it's high summer, okay? So it is thick, humid. You can cut it with a knife. And mm. the insects are everywhere. They swarm. And basically, um, if it wasn't for the fact of the, um, uh, called the Bulpar sap, essentially it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a sap that they get out of the trees and they burn it but they also crunch it up into a powder and they rub it onto their bodies. Fortunately, it has a nice cinnamony smell, So, uh, but it's a bug repellent. But even in the summertime, because the insects are so intense, you guys are going to have a minus one to all of your rolls. So attack rolls to all of your saving throws. Oh, that's, that's wrong, man. I would like to put on my, my gauze suit. Okay, there is the if now the gauze suit. There you go. You guys basically have, and I, I should have probably said this beforehand. Everybody will have a gauze suit, but you're all going to have a number of different items. So the gauze suit will help you, and it will nullify that uh, that minus one, so long as you're wearing it. Okay, gauze suit. You can't really swim in it. Can't really climb in it. Right. Can't really do anything besides walk or be in a canoe. The good thing is because it's summer, that means there's plenty of water where if it was winter, you'd have to walk wherever you're going. You can canoe to where you need to go now. So there is that oh, going cool. out for you. Okay. So uh you are going to be uh you will have a number of uh little Gosh. odds and ends with you. Uh you'll have a month supply because like that um the bullpen uh sap stuff everybody has plenty of that so everybody's gonna ha have plenty of that to use um the only way that'll come up as an issue is per se if you were to say like lose your backpack so <clears throat> okay the other important thing aside there is the god suits the other thing you can have if you so choose but it's super hot and if you, <laughs> there's the camouflage cloaks. This is one of the few places oh. where halflings all wear shoes. I can see Because why. you don't want to be walking <laughs> through the muck and get stuff. So every one of you will have what are called, uh, their waterproof shoes. But then you also will have what are called muckers, which are basically snowshoes for the swamp. What about these foreigners? Have they been here long enough to get this stuff? Fortunately, yes. <laughs> so, and uh, basically, what just to give a short little uh, history of what Willow Isle is. Willow Isle is basically just a, um, it was a couple of halfling clans that went into the swamp 
um, avoiding a war and decided to set down stakes. Uh, they were joined later on by another. There's the Mudfoot and the Frog Petal. These are two fa the two founding families of, of Willow Isle. They um, have a strange naming convention about them. Essentially, uh, when you're, uh, uh, couples get married, if they're of two separate families and they have children, if there's a boy that's born, they take the name of the father. If there's a girl that's born, they take the name of the mother. So it re retains the oh, mudfoot cool. and the uh, frog petal names. The other clan that came to join them is the Quick Paw clan. And they're the ones who brought the marsh curs, which are the dogs that they rear. Now, these are, dogs are big enough for them to ride if they so choose. Okay. And they're water dogs, got webbed feet, what have you. And this is another uh, family of halflings that decided to come to the relative safety of the swamp, at least the safety of getting away from the humans and their lands and so forth and so on. Well, can I, I'm going to show this real quick. Uh, yeah, I have a question ahead. from the audience. So, what island in the Rushmores is this? Is here? It's in the Rushmores Excel. Where, where, where are we? Are we over here? It's you're da yeah, you're down in the southern tip. So this one here, basically, essentially, but you're going to be more down into the southern southern. Down here. So da yeah, right around in there. Okay, got it. That's, so there you go. That's that's where Willow Isle is. Okay, All right, cool. Yeah, and of course it gets its name from the willows that grow naturally all around Willow Isle. Um, there's a couple of uh, islands, and then there's uh, mainland type uh, that surrounds uh, a small lake called Crystal Lake that's right next to it. And there's a willows grow up all over in the summertime. So, like right now, you can't really see the inhabitants' village, uh, their their homes, because of the willows that grow up, because these are hobbit homes, and they're all small. Ooh, did I say Hobbit? They're halfling homes. <laughs> they are, they're all small. So okay. the only building that you can really see is the Inn of the Laughing Frog. Okay. And it's one of the only buildings that is large enough to accommodate non-halfling sized creatures. So um, it sits up on a, a little bit of a, of a hill within the village. The uh, there's a, a a number of uh, creeks that come out and flow into the Crystal Creek right through Willow Isle, and that's basically how the halflings do most of their traveling into the swamp is via canoe. They they go out and they paddle into the swamp. They do their scavenging. They collect uh, you know all types of uh, swamp flowers, herbs incense these sort of things and then they turn around and then togo quick paw the local merchant he will take them and he will go sell them in other towns outside of the swamp to human folk what have you there is a number of people who do come here looking for guides because they are known to be the best guides if you want to go anywhere within rushmore you go to willow isle and you hire one of these halflings and they'll show you around because well, the Rushmores has a number of different things that bring some people here snooping around. Probably the most famous of is the old ancient tower of Vecna. Yes, which the is Rada Tower. More, which is more, which is north of Willow Isle, but is in the swamp. And every so often, there come some some interesting folk that want to come around and check things out and the halflings will take them and they'll take them along and show them the sites. And, uh, you know, sometimes they'll even drop them off because they will only go so far into where these ruins are. And there's more than just the, the ruined tower there. Everybody just thinks of, oh, Vecna's tower and that's what's there. Vecna had a whole complex of stuff that was around there. So there's quite a bit of ruins in around there. And that general whole vicinity, while the halflings will take you close to it and drop you off and maybe even arrange it to come and get you they themselves don't go in there because well it's got a bad bunch of bad juju about that that's place. fascinating but we know old boa predates that <laughs> you're correct so mm. let's go ahead and i'm going to set up basically and let everybody know so um is it is it fen is that how we're pronouncing it or is it okay so fen has come to um it, it, well 
like I'm presumption presuming. Did you have anything specific as to why she was traveling here, or has she just come to see Freda? Um, you know, she's just trying to look around and see, like, a little look and learn. Um, trying to find out uh, more about the swamp and the plants and um, all kinds of things like that. Um, as a <laughs> druid, she just wants, you know, to expand her repertoire. Excellent. And you have an affinity towards swamps, so it makes yes. sense that you would come to Willow Isle. This is, you know, it's, while it's renowned among halflings, it's not known so much to the common folk, but halflings know, every all halflings know about Willow Isle. So it just makes complete sense that you would come here. Now, Freda Frogpetal is the resident druid. So that's who you're staying with currently. You're staying with Perfect. her in, in her old Willow Tree house. So you guys, and she's showing you all the different things that she knows about the swamp. Now, the other traveler that we have yeah. that's come here is uh, Alex. What's what's your, what's your fellow's name again? I'm going to have to write that. Uh, Luciano. Luciano. There it is. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Lu Whistle Roddy. That's now, right. Luciano. Okay. Mm. You're a whistler. Now, if anybody. Specialize in cat calls, too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody's familiar with what the old school version of a whistler is, it's sort of like a druid. I mean, a, not a druid, a bard, sort of. Basically, their claim to fame is they could whistle some magic up. One of the number one things they could whistle up is like weather, and they and they're like their main gig was sort of like helping to uh, make sure uh, crops were were plentiful, and they would travel around. To different uh halfling uh communities to do this well if they're traveling around i was like you know what this doesn't make sense that all he's doing is going around to whistle up a, a rainstorm here or there i've t I, they are they are bards but basically you're also the mailman so what you do is because you're traveling around to all these different halfling uh villages you take pending news from place to place and one of the biggest reasons you do this is because so many halfling villages are what they're hidden they hide their villages away they don't want the big folk knowing where they're at so you need people like this and you retain and become a repository for halfling lore so you know that's one of your jobs as well is taking all this information around well are you telling so, me are you telling me that he's the halfling kevin costner that's exactly what oh he my is. Gosh. He even looks but like he can, a little bit. That movie's so he, terrible. But he can do an accent better, and he can whistle. <laughs> I know I'm showing my age, Postman. Terrible movie. <laughs> Only good thing about the movie, Tom Petty's in it. Right. Is Tom Petty in there? Yeah, he is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. He might be the only people who ever watched that movie. Yep, there you go. All four uh, of us watch that movie? <laughs> I never saw it. Well, according to the president, it's post just saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So you've come, okay, so now this is going to go back to Big Jim, which, uh, ma'am, that's, that's his nickname. He likes to be called Big Jim, and <laughs> a, a lot of people humor him and call him that. Great. You are a guardian, but you're not the head I'm not guardian. The sheriff. Yep. You're not the sheriff. This isn't your town. You're training, okay, you're training under the guardian that lives here. And the guardian that lives here is Duggan Quickpaw. Okay. Duggan is the sheriff, and he's the guy who's showing you the ropes. And, and I appreciate that because I have no idea what I'm doing. We don't need no law around here, law dog. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing is you're to the to the point where you're trained. You're trained enough that you could have your own. It's time to move on. Now. It's time to move on. So what you're doing is you're waiting. The, the word has been sent out. And you are patiently waiting for a word to come back with a place that is looking for a guardian that you will accept. So okay. it's not, you're not getting assigned. Places are just sending, hey, we would like one. And then you get to choose. And basically, Duggan is going to go over all that stuff with you. I know Fabio has been sending out messages, it appears. Well, Fabio was the is the cousin. That was the that was the when I made up all the characters. Right. They they had a, they had a name, and then you guys. Oh, could oh Luciano. Okay, so it's Luciano. Luciano all Fabio. right, I got it. I'm just I'm reading. So okay. When he gets really hey, drunk, Patrick. Luciano starts calling himself Fabio. He lets his hair down. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, Curtis is used to doing that too. So we yeah, all yeah. saw Gary Khan. By the way, regulars Fen three, 
Luciana three, Philip and and myself two, and then you have fifteen. Will from Pat? Holy uh, from, crap! Yeah, that was all from Bullshit. Troy. That was all from Troy. Thank you, Troy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So so, you're bringing the news, Luciano. You're bringing it to uh, to the, to the village, and you've dropped off some letters, and you're hanging out for a little while before you carry on and go to the next place. One of the reasons that you're waiting for two is because you're waiting to see if there's any other letters that need to go out and normally this the town council the village council would give those to you but the village council which is made up of mira mudfoot who is the priestess of yolanda fenton frog pedal who is a retired whistler and you were hoping to spend some time with him mm. before you left and dug in quick paul those three make up the council well they're not here they've left it seems that Togo Quickpaw, the local town uh, merchant, the village merchant, was arrested in Dilwich. And so they've had to leave to go and take care of the situation and bail Togo out. Mm. So they currently are not here in the village when you showed up. So you're kind of waiting around for them. And Togo doesn't have a great reputation, does he? No, Togo does not. Togo, if there's anybody in the village... That is considered to be a shady, slicko used car salesman. Sorry to all the used car salesmen out there. It would be Togo. Togo is not considered the most trustworthy of okay. clients. So, but okay. he's a great merchant, and he's still entrusted with the the village, the trading of the village. So, um, mm. the four of you have been hanging out together a little bit getting to know things and going out on forays and showing uh, Fen the different things in the swamp, right? Now, of course, uh, Big Jim wants to go along and make sure that everybody is well protected because he doesn't want... Because essentially, you the law now until Duggan comes back, right? He basically, when he left, he said, hey, just keep an eye on everything for me while I'm gone. Then he left. And then, of course, well, Luciano... You got none better to do. <laughs> so the four of you are coming back in from out of the swamp. Mm. Where we had uh Philip was uh showing Fen like some of the local stuff. Did we see and, old Boa in the swamp? There's always a possibility. Yeah. Go ahead and roll me a D one hundred. Yeah. By the way, when when his when his pick scrolls through, you'll see old Boa in the background of his picture. Twenty three. Yeah. Oh, nope. Old Boa. Well, I saw the scales of Old Boa glinting on the dew. Yeah. So he's entertaining to be around, guys. And I saw <laughs> his breath in the fog of the morning. He's out there. Terrifying. <laughs> Something should bestly be left alone there, Philip. But I understand your fascination. I understand that you don't understand. <laughs> All I understand is there's something in the swamp watching us. <laughs> yes. Correct. Don't fear. You are in touch with the land. You know there's spirits of the land that can guide us and help us. That's very you true, know that, more uh, than they're... most, Fen. You know more than most. Yeah, uh, the ones I, I usually talk to are the small ones. <laughs> Friendly ones. <laughs> <laughs> is Old Boa a snake? <laughs> the spirit of the swamp that circles the world, guards the swamp. There you go. There's a p background picture of Old Boa pull up beneath me. <laughs> mm. A little big. We are a tasty morsel. If he manifests in the physical world, he's the shape of a large boa, but he's around all the time. Spirit of the swamp. Had a cousin like that spirit once. Spirit of the swamp. <laughs> <I did. laughs> so as you guys are coming back into the village, it is becoming dusk. Which within a, okay. the, the swamp, especially during the summertime, it falls quickly. As you're coming in, you see some lights popping on here and there behind the uh the the swaying willows that conceal most of the of the buildings. Um, and as you're 
making your way to who's ever house or wherever you were planning on going. Freena, who's a 13 year old girl comes running up to you and she is the daughter of Bella who owns um, the Laughing Frog. Oh, Bella. Yes, Bella. I wish I could so, keep my eyebrow. Rena comes running up and says, "Hey, hey, hey, y'all! Uh, Mama told me sent me over here to to to. I've been looking everywhere for you. I just didn't. I didn't go too far out to the swamp, but and I've been looking at. There's some big folk that they came to the the inn, and she wants you guys to come over so she can talk with you, especially you, uh, uh, Miriam. I'm sorry, Big Jim." Little one, you can call me whatever you so choose. All right, Daphne, go nice. check it out. Go check Mama. Make sure she's okay. Let's send the dragon. Okay. They sent the so, dragon ahead. It's smart. The fairy dragon. Where does the fairy dragon stay on you? Just like uh, hanging on pseudo your shoulder? Dragon. Pseudo dragon. Pseudo dragon. I'm sorry. Does it, is it just like... Yeah, normally on, on the shoulder. shoulder. Okay. All right. So, I'm thinking the insects, the little bugs don't bother. Oh, no. You know, they they, don't, she'll they don't eat them. Her. She'll eat them, and then they can't get through her, her skin anyway. Yeah. So Daphne just kind of like looks at you and goes, "Really? You want me to go up there? You want me to?" It's to Bella. Fly? It's Mama. That's remember? your concern. That's not my concern. I don't well, understand. Well, you said she loves Bella because Bella raised her and nursed her. Oh, and... that's you. Totally right. I was yeah. That's to why bust, I did that. They're trying to bust your balls there for a second, and I shouldn't. Have. Nice okay. Try. So wah, she, wah, she, wah. she, 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 uh, she. We'll, we'll rewind that for a second. She like gets big eyes and goes, oh, Bella. And she, she flies away. That's right. Because she nursed her back to health. I forgot about that. <laughs> you write so much. It, it all kinds of. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So she goes flying up and, and Frina is basically going to uh, uh, follow you guys. And you guys, I take it all are going up to the, uh, to the laughing frog again. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Because, because I have that special in, Cantation. I can see through her eyes as I'm moving along. So what mm -hmm. is, making sure I'm making sure there's no one waiting in ambush for us. So not a problem. Okay. So when you do that though, you have to you have to be stationary. So and kind of go into a trance like mode to do well. This. I'll give her time to get there and then I'll pause and then do it. Okay. Okay. We're just gonna keep so you guys, moving forward. Yeah, I was gonna say, so you guys are walking along. <laughs> And then Philip just like goes, gets down in the lotus position. Yeah. And goes, um. Is he okay? He's no, he's not. <laughs> Marin says he's using. Very, just, I don't recognize this position from the book. Yes, you just yeah. need to let him move. Uh, just let him do his thing. Spirit sight. You guys don't understand. <laughs> so basically, is that a real look... thing, or is he just? <laughs> no, it's real. Us? Yeah. The uh, so uh. You see through uh, Daphne's eyes. Daphne goes flying up there, um, goes and finds Bella. Right, and Bella's fine. There's nothing on the on the path up through the village to the inn. Nothing along those lines. I I speak through Daphne because I can do that. Speak through her. Mm -hmm. Speak through her. I say, "We are on the way." And then oh, I'll... and basically she just grabs Daphne and starts like loving on her when she comes in. Sorry, right. I I'll, as soon as it's okay, I'm just gonna go come out of the trance and yeah, I'm not gonna rush kiss, to catch up. She doesn't kiss Daphne until you're gone. <laughs> so frank, man. I'm not gone. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she knows. <laughs> All right. So okay, so you guys, um, everything's fine, everything's cool. You you go with Freena, you go up, and you get to the laughing frog. What yeah. number is it on the map, Will? I'm sorry. I should have known that. It should be time. top right. One, right? Yeah, yeah. scroll uh, down right. to look at the picture of Bella again. How far down? Keep going. Oh, right there. oh okay. Oh. No wonder. No Phillip, wonder. Philip thinks she's just the... Oh, yeah. These knees right there. She, there you knees. go. Uh, he really likes her. No, it's no problem. She's married. doesn't matter. If you scroll down a little bit more, there's a picture of the inside of the end. Yeah. Everyone, all you got to do is join the Patreon. It's really Ooh. inexpensive. Yeah, really nice. Uh, yeah, now we can yeah. see why humans can be in there. Inexpensive. Yeah, you can join for free. Well, yeah, <laughs> you don't get everything, but you can join yeah, for free. So please, I'll, I'll keep on shouting you out, Will. I mean, it's like yeah. I said, the 5e references resources on the site are unbelievable. So everyone, um, it's if you uh, 
all the kits and everything you've done. It's it's just it's really impressive. So, and this one in particular is free, though, if I remember it. Yep, yep. All the all the Greyhawk stuff is free because it's got IP in it. Yep, absolutely. So, okay, very cool. So, you guys get to the Laughing Frog. Open the door. Place is busy. You know, it's getting to dusk, so people are starting to stream in from whatever you're doing. And there's fans on and so forth in here. You, Whenever you're inside of an establishment or a dungeon, you do not have to worry about that really oppressive heat and bugs. Okay? okay. So you come in. When you guys come in, basically, there's the normal town folk sitting around in their normal mm -hmm. areas, you know drinking talking playing games having fun there is a little bit the volume has been dialed down a little bit and because everybody as they're doing what they're doing they're also trying to eavesdrop in on the biggins that have come how many are there in our sim there's three okay and they sit at, at their own table like over in a corner right and at this table is a fellow who looks like Kevin Costner. <laughs> Since we're on a Kevin Costner kick. And uh, he's dressed in like uh, traveling robes. I mean, I mean, like clothes, uh, nothing really outstanding. He, he doesn't scream, hey, I'm a wizard and here's my staff. It, it, there's nothing that's really you could pin him down besides the fact that he's a man who's been on the road, has traveled quite a bit. The clothes that he wears do look like used travel clothes not fresh out of the are uh, they robes yeah. or are they like no they're not robes okay they're, they're they're clothes they're clothes for sure with him is a an exceptionally tall elven mm. uh woman and she is a a wood elf in black leathers so which you guys all see that and go, she's got to be hot. She's got to be just sweating up a storm. <laughs> it's got to be uncomfortable in this one. Big Jim's like, yeah, hot in more ways than one, dude. <laughs> got to think for elven females. Hair is cut very short, very uh, military high and tight. Hmm. Okay, so no long flowing locks of any oh, that ruined So, that. And has uh, several visible scars on He's her face. He's a ranger. Could be, yeah. Definitely, he's carrying a, a a bow and uh, has some scimitars, that sort of thing. And then with them is a burly half orc, and he burly he's, what half, half orc. orc. All right. He's 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 dressed in a, he as well as dressed in travel clothes. Does have a a, a leather jerkin, leather uh, gauntlets and greaves. Uh, but he, he doesn't seem to be dressed so much for, like, tanky combat or anything along those lines. Um, he does have a weapon of some sort with him. Um, uh, let's see. What does he have? Yep. So it's a great sword. I don't trust him. But that's 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 propped against the, uh, the wall, too. It's not even within uh, grabbing distance for him. They are sitting at the table and they're laughing and seeming to be having a good time. Well, at least all of them are laughing except for the uh, for the wood elf. And they're sitting with Milo Mudfoot. Milo Mudfoot is the master crafter of canoes. He makes the best canoes and he has a shop right out back so want a canoe where you me. can buy all kinds of canoes from Ones that'll fit halflings to families to you know he's got it all. What relation is he to me? Since I'm a oh Mudfoot. he's he's related to you. Anybody with the name Mudfoot's related to you. It's kind so, of disturbing, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, th it's a big tree with a lot of branches. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, can you, and, can you? Uh, canoe, 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 canoe maker. Canoe? They need a canoe to get wherever they're going. Want to go? It's an yeah, old retro truck. commercial. Here's Canoe yeah, Canoe. I didn't get that. So the, here's the thing too is Milo is even though he's an an an, an elder halfling, you know, he's in his middle uh, late middle ages, we'll say then, and uh, he is hands down the best guide in Willow Isle, hands down. So that's what you see coming in, and as soon as you come in, 
Right there at the front, of course, is Bella and her husband uh, tending bar. And the, the kids are out and about in the common area doing their stuff. As soon as you come in, Daphne flies over, lands on your shoulder, Philip. And uh, Bella greets you guys. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Quick, come over. Come over. And Gladly. She, like, drops, <laughs> drops the octave a little bit. And she's and she doesn't look at Philip at all. She she looks right at Jim. It's like, Jim, <laughs> do you know when the when, do you know when Doug and, and the rest are coming back? Of course you don't. I do not. Well, this is highly perplexing. Now, Freda, who's the druid, okay, that you that yeah. Fen is staying with, right? Um. She left this morning, said she wouldn't be back for a couple of days. She went out on the, into the swamp on her own business. How convenient. Right? It's almost as if it was designed for none of the higher level people that would take care of this business to be around. <laughs> so what you're saying is we've been left unsupervised. Oh, technically. <laughs> technically That's the best Jim's kind of charge. supervision. Jim was Thanks, given Jeff. the reins uh, by Duggan when he left. He said, hey, look after the place and then took off. Old so, Boa is always she, supervising us. It's the B team. <laughs> Correct. B for Boa. B for <laughs> time to step up. So uh, what? what is the issue? They seem to be not causing any trouble. Well, they're not, but it, they're planning on Jim. Milo has agreed to go with them. Where? Now, he's far too old. The tower. He is precious commodity. The tower? To the yes. Wow. Must be paid. I agree. Philip, that's he, the, Vecna, wanted the Vecna ruin tower, a rotting tower. Wait. Right? You told me that they just drop people off nearby. Exactly. But they seem to be talking some kind of mess and got Milo all riled up. I have a great idea. It's not a great idea. She looks we, again at Jim. Bella. We can guide him. <laughs> we can guide him. Oh, that's not a half bad idea. I, I was just know. actually what I was hoping is maybe that Jim, you could talk him out of it. I can and, make an yeah. attempt to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, of course, to find out their intentions. I mean, they seem. I mean, that one fellow is half orc. Yeah, you can't hold that against anyone. Yes, well, you can. yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> We have to give First everyone a fair It's not right. It's not right. <laughs> we must... Well, let me tell you, I love big people drama. <laughs> They're always getting they always in the worst so much trouble. Drama. I know. Who would want to go up to Vecna's old tower anyway? It's nothing but a bunch of apple down rocks. And, and, you know, we don't have to get involved. We can just watch what happens. I know. That's why I was hoping that you could just talk Milo out of going. All right, so uh, who? I don't think all four of us. Well, I guess we can all go over to the bar, uh, to the table, and try and join them. Sure, I'm going to so, go over because I want Daphne to say some smart ass shit. Uh, Luciano, oh, yeah. uh, Luciano <laughs> is actually going to ask Bella to take the elf, the purest water that she has at the tavern here. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> So Not alcohol, but water. Hmm. Yeah. Do you want me to say it's from you? He strokes the only two chest hairs that he has and says, of course. Oh, all right. <laughs> so she oh, goes my. back into the uh, to the kitchen to get water. Um, <laughs> spring water, of course. So because, you know, there are springs. So, uh, yeah, good. All right. So you go walking over. And as you're going over, the way that they're situated at the Talo, at the Talo, at the table, Milo has his back to the wall so he can see the entire place. Right. Because right? Milo's an old smart dude. And he sees you coming. Right. And when you get within earshot, and as you, it's, it's almost because. As you progress step by step closer to that table, your little group, you can hear the um, the background noise of the of the inn itself of people talking, whatnot. Stop. Just it starts coming down. Yeah. You know? So by the time you're over there, it's like everybody's all like, 
listening. It's that was that EF Hutton? Is that what it was where they used yeah, to do people, that? When we talk, people listen. Oh my god. Yeah. Stop with the old guy comment uh remembrances. I my can't. gosh. When you're an old guy, that's what I you know. Do. I whew. <laughs> so Milo looks, he looks straight at you, Jim, and he goes, Jim. Milo. Uh, mm-hmm. I, you want to be adventurous, I see, huh? Oh, uh, can you introduce me to your friends? Uh, of course. This here's, uh, let me grab my book. <laughs> well, they can introduce themselves, can't they? Uh, I reckon. <laughs> and then the, the, the guy who's in the, uh, um, his, uh, uh, the traveling clothes, mm-hmm. uh, he goes, what? Uh, of course we can introduce ourselves. So nice to meet you. My name is Cade. Some last K. Dolvin. I am a uh, professor, professor of history and sciences um, out of Greyhawk University. Wisdom. Pleasure to meet you. And he gets up from by, he gets up from the table and comes over and he offers his hand to him. You sound like what's his name who wore all, all the white in the in the uh, Colonel Sanders. Yeah, no, not, <laughs> Colonel Colonel Sa- Sanders. not Colonel Sanders. The one, the one Val Kilmer was doing a traveling thing on before he lost his voice. Oh, Mark Twain. Mark Twain. You sound like Mark Twain a little Mark bit there. Twain. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, do, do you shake it? Sh- 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 I, Colonel, Colonel Sanders. Sanders nice. Yeah. Do, uh, good one. Do have a ball? He's got one of those those ties, you know, those string ties. He's right. got one yeah. of those. Yeah. So, no. so Will, we, we, the, it's like a southern uh, hick accent sort of down here? It's a southern gentleman's accent, I'll have you know. There, Will. <laughs> so. From Greyhawk. Oh. College, uh, college, university, sir. University, university. Yes, uh, and, uh, these are my uh, associates. Uh, this here is Ferocia, and he uh, gestures towards the, the half uh, to the wood. Yeah. No, the wood oh, elf. Oh, the wood elf. Ferocia. Well, that's Ferocia. Oh, Ferocia. Yeah. And uh, she just kind of like, like it. She, yeah, she like, like Furiosa. Yeah, she like cocks an eyebrow, sucks her teeth a little bit, Ugh. and then doesn't say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And this is my, uh, this is the Rook, my, 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 uh, uh, what do you call the fellow who carries your stuff? A my por- porter. Porter. Pardon me, I've had a little drink. <clears throat> and the Rook goes, hello. Hey, please join us. Uh, 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 Milo is uh, uh, not mentioned anything about you. I, I, I'm at a loss of who you might be. Let me get some chairs. And he goes over to like another table that's right next to you that has empty chairs. And he goes and he brings some over for you guys so that you can all sit at the table. Right about then, a glass of water is brought over by Bella and set in front of Ferocia. And she looks over at Luciano and goes, um, it's from him. And then she scutters off. Ferocia looks in there. So are they buying up, us it, Sets it down. Looks at you, doesn't say anything. I, I don't know, Philip. You can ask for dinner. That's a start. Yeah, I want to be like, sir. Uh, as we are here at dinner time, perhaps you could extend your courtesy to include our dinner. Wow. Of course, by all means, I'll uh, order uh, whatever is, is the local fare for everyone. Oh, very good. So he'll. I suggest we order the most expensive stuff possible. No, don't. Do it. It's just like relax. You have to have a little bit of decorum here. Well, I'm not going to say that, Phillip. but I know. Oh, whatever is easy, though. I don't want to stress Bella. So whatever is easiest for her, actually. So what's what's whatever's the specials? What yeah, you whatever the specials. Okay. Dig. And some lapping frog ale. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yes. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to hold off on discussion. Because some people like to talk business while they're... This is boring yeah. as hell. Can I go somewhere and do something? Yes, you can. Go kill something. Thank you. And then Daphne flies off to be the I dog. find talking business over gustation to be coarse and vulgar. Oh, a leonard man. You, uh, oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I have, and he brings out some cigars and he puts them on the table for after our uh, repast. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, we'll fast forward. Say you guys eat. You yeah. you have pleasantries in the southern manner. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll get to... Uh, uh, as he's handing around the cigars to anybody who would like them. Feriosa doesn't say anything the entire time. 
So like she does drink your water, Luciana, and and when she drinks, it takes a takes a, a a swallow of it and then sets it down. She looks at you, doesn't do anything, and then just continues watching everybody else. But every time she drinks, she looks right at you, or whatever that means. So there you go. So uh, Milo is actually the one that's that uh, spouts up and goes. So what is it that y'all want? He's looking at you, Jim. What do we want? Uh, so you don't come over and just bug anybody for no reason. Milo, uh, you are. Uh, I respect you a lot, and note that if you were building or, or or being a guide for this esteemed group, and they are traveling a great distance, I don't think that behooves you to um, to do that. I would rather uh, someone take your place. I'm doing. I'm saying this as a relative and a friend. Noted. We're leaving in the morning. Hmm. <laughs> Y'all want to tag along, you can. Such a charmer. <sighs> yes. <laughs> he's got the personality of a rock. Yeah, he's Ben's great. He's going to just lean in and say, so, so what are they all after? Uh... Oh, allow me to tell you the story. Uh, there you go. Good question. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> that I, I happen to have. A, uh, a, a compatriot of mine at the university, uh, Dr. Bruth. Now, Dr. Bruth is hands down the uh, 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 resident expert on Vecna and all things Vecna. Uh, and, and, and he had found some information about uh, things uh, about Vecna that were right here in the swamp. Now, he's been gone for months now absolutely months and i've heard nothing from him and i'm afraid that something might have happened to him but he did leave something behind and he goes and like they've got their packs and stuff are against this wall where they've leaned their weapons and what have you he goes over and he rumbles around through his pack and he pulls out essentially it's almost about it's square but it's like dinner plate size stone and he takes it and he puts it on the table so it's like a stone, like flat plate mm. pile sort of thing. There is a map on there. Mm. Now, these guys are very forthcoming. Milo here, who's who agreed to be our guide after we showed him this, agrees that this, and he starts pointing on to the different things on on the stone tablet. This here he says is such and such and that and. Milo corrects him, says he's doing it wrong, and goes, no, that's this, and blah, blah, blah. There's a map on this stone tablet, and it seems to show a particular place, and Milo's got his finger on it, and he goes, I ain't never been here. I ain't never seen this on nothing. And so he's referring to, essentially, it's in, in reference to, the, like, the... The surrounding area, how there was a complex of ruins and different things there, and this is something that Milo doesn't know exists. So Milo, for sure, wants to go and see what it is. And so, so, oh. so uh, I, of course, am concerned for my my fellow compatriot and want want to just make sure that, uh, well, he hasn't fallen to anything terrible out there in the swamp. Or if he has, maybe to find some proof so that I can tell the uh, the people at the university that he, uh, Dr. Bruce has passed on. Will? So, huh? Oh, go ahead. So your friend has gone missing and you think he might be dead and so you're just going to go do the same thing that he did. <laughs> well, it's the only gentlemanly thing to do. He's, he's a compatriot of mine and a dear friend. If he's in, in need of help, I tried to get the university to drum up more funds and get more people, but they said no. And it's like, I just can't, I just can't do it. If I know where he might be, it might be in trouble. Mm -hmm. If y'all would like to come with me, I sure would appreciate it. I could use the help. I don't know the swamp at all. I mean, aside from good Milo here, I don't know what would happen to me. Oh gosh, that sounds like a real good idea. 
<laughs> so, Will, I do have a, a background question. It'll frame sure. how I react. Is now I have my three fellow cultists that live out there. I have a uh, so clock, and uh, and also there's the tree out there, right? The old tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this locations are shown on the map? Or is there anywhere near? The lizard men or the bully wugs? <laughs> um, there's a possibility. What I want you to do is I want you. Do you want high or low? High. Okay. Roll. Roll D100. Mm. Seventy. Okay. Good. All right. So yeah, it's it's relatively close to where the bully wugs are. Um, but here's the thing. It's like most people tend to give that whole area kind of a berth. Right. But if you were to detour to any of them, it would be the Bullywugs that you would go to. Okay. The one I know is named. Can you hear that? Does the sound travel? No, I didn't hear it. I'm making a pop sound. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> That's his excellent. name. Excellent. Excellent. As it should be. As it and the other be. one is t clock. Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, those so, are the names. Is something stuck racist. in his throat, perhaps. Yeah. Don't be racist. Those are lizard man and bullywug names. <laughs> <laughs> With his uh, travels and communication, would Luciano know anything of the history of this area? Take it down, Philip. Take it down. The, 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 A notch. The what you would know. You know what? Go ahead and give me. You got history. I would take it, right? Is Correct. One of, yeah. Okay. Go ahead and just give me a, a roll. Let me see what you get. Of course, obviously, higher, better on this. That's an eleven on the roll, and I get plus three for history. Okay. So basically, now you would have to score because basically you're going to know the traditional stuff. You know, you know that Vecna was here and blah 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 and all that sort of back history sort of thing. Um, nothing that would be drawn specifically to like this one building of any sort though. So. Hold on one second. I need to check one thing here. Oh, there you what, what do you mean? Sorry. You're not going to be sorry for it. <laughs> so just going to keep it exciting. Yeah. Okay. Philip with his, uh, Shout outs and blurbs here. Uh, it's got a uh, Marin a little, a little put off here. And he's like, he says, I think we should evaluate this situation, all four of us, and then come up with an idea that, I mean, if we're going to put ourselves at risk here, I don't mind doing it, but this sounds frivolous. <laughs> yeah. <Doesn't it? laughs> yeah. So I think we should. By the way, uh, um, I'll, one second. Um, so maybe they should uh, offer us something. And I'm only saying that because, not for myself, but for the rest of you. Uh, maybe uh, if we. <laughs> now, do yeah. you want to have that conversation privately, or are you? I'm going to say in front of all of them because I don't. Okay, care. great, great. Because as soon as you say that, um. Cade, he 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 pipes up. Well, of course. I mean, if you were willing to come with us, I would be more than happy to uh, uh, pay whatever fees you would require to assist in the guiding and helping uh, Mister Milo here to uh, show us how to get there. I would. Is I, this? Oh, good. I would prefer found items if we're going to an unknown area. I think we all would because you might, we who knows what we'll come across. Oh, well, yeah, I, I care not for any items that are found. I'm looking for my compatriot. So, okay. So how about just normal expenses? We can come to a determination of what that is and then uh, equal share of anything that is uh, located and found. Sound like a plan? Are we, are well, we of all course. In, we're all in agreement? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Excellent, excellent. I'm so happy. So am I. So he's like, he My, gets, I, he, I'm so f happy. Philip's not talking. <laughs> he, yeah. he hands out the he hands out the cigars <laughs> to whoever would want them, and he starts like. But Milo, you do you really want to come? I have to go. Okay. I ain't never seen it. Okay. Need to see it. Okay. Got a feeling that hole on my map. Uh, Luciano nudges Big Jim, and then he uh, casts prestigitation, 
to create a bunch of floating pink frogs in front of Milo's face. Wow. Pink fruity. <laughs> I've never seen an elephant, so I can't say elephants. <laughs> <laughs> so at that time, after it, it's like the deal has been struck. You, so you, uh-huh. is this location near where we think the tower is? Oh, it's on the outskirts yeah, of that uh, area. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're not going yeah. to the tower. It's with they the know uh-huh. the story of the tower? Oh, yeah. You you you've come across a general opinion that they realize what this place is. Right, but do they know the story of how the tower crashed down? Um, I don't know. Maybe not. Old Boa was sought after by the evil one, Vecna, and he tried to imprison him in his tower, trying to get him to worship him and do what he said. And old Boa resisted and used his mighty powers to tear the tower down, and it crumbled and fell. And now he guards the swamp for all of us to keep this evil at bay. So be warned. Well, excellent. I'm glad you're coming. (laughs) So he's saying... He starts lighting up the cigars for everyone. And at that point in time, as he's reaching in with a flame to write, to light Philip's cigar, the front door of the Laughing Frog is thrown open okay. as a huge, just shattering and shaking the entire end gust of wind. Which is something you never have in the swamp. Spell. Does my cigar get lit? Oh, it almost did. And then the fire on his like (laughs) tweed or whatever uh, piece of wood he was uh, lighting it with is blown out. And with that, the door is blown open. The shutters are blown in. The gauze off the windows is blown off and into the inn. All of the candles and like open lanterns and different things that make light are blown out except for a handful like maybe we'll say three lanterns that were covered so the place is instantly dark thrown into dim light okay which isn't going to affect you halflings because you halflings have dark vision okay It'll affect the humans or anybody else, but you happenings are good. Okay. And at that time, then the wind dies down. Doesn't go away completely. It's still blowing at a consistent rate. And you hear a... (laughs) And in through the front door comes floating on the air... Uh, an ethereal form looks sort of humanish, long beard, dressed in robes. Is it this pale the, blue? Is it the ghost of All right, your friend? You're up now. Uh, could, could be a ghost for sure, could be a ghost, but it comes floating in, and as it's coming floating in, it's raising a hand and it's Kate. pointing a finger towards Kate. It's It's Colonel Sanders' friend. Kate's friend. It's dead. Oh, great. Oh, here comes the drama. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Kate. And Cade, actually, when he comes in, he goes, oh, my. What? Um, oh, my. Oh, there's probably going to be in the chat. All right. So we'll Everybody see. needs to roll an ish for me. Uh, Will, what die do I roll? So I know, for an initiative, you're going to roll. That's right. Roll, you're going to roll a D20, and you're going to add to it whatever your modifier on your dexterity. Dex. All right. Yep. Sorry for being such a noob with five E. Oh no, 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 no. Individual and in between Ashley and me, we'll we'll make sure that we get something right, together cool. that seems like the real rules. I think Alex is good with five too. Yeah, Tim, Alex, you good with Tim, five. Yeah, look at I that. Tim yeah, Tim and I are <laughs> Tim and I are in the dark. That's okay. Do I roll? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every, every go, everybody go ahead and roll. <laughs> so seven. Noob City. Okay. Seven. All right. Plus. What is Luciano? Do about? I add my dexterity? Eleven. Yeah, I add your dexterity yes. modifier. Nine. Okay, we got nine. <laughs> What's Fen got? 
Also a nine. Oh, I'm liking this. Big Jim. 12 plus 2, 14. 14. Excellent. That means everybody... Uh, Goes yeah. last. You, you, have, you have a question? Yes, just a big mechanics question before sure. we begin this terrible action. Mm -hmm. So spell casting, is it like a, a sorcerer where I can I can only I have two slots, but I have I can choose from my total list, but I only do two, except Correct. for cantrips. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Yay. So you guys fail. They get to go first. They I rolled a fifteen. Oh, did I say they? I rolled a fifteen. <laughs> so, <laughs> whoops! Uh, what happens is, is as this ghost-like apparition comes floating in, uh, pointing at Cade, and and moaning. In behind him, at, at a considerably faster pace than because the the ghost is kind of like floating, meandering, kind of like this zooms in, and it is like a dark cloud in a like a, a wraith-like form with glowing eyes in in the darkness. So it's not like a, a it's like a, if if there was lightning in in dark clouds, you know how it lights up the clouds? That's the eyes within within the uh the wraith like oh being. And it flies directly towards K. Well he ain't telling the whole story. They're all pissed off at him. Of he course. set up his friend. He set up his friend to be killed, probably. Ugh. You gotta love D and D players. They're all so paranoid. <laughs> exactly. I wonder I why. Tim. It's all Tim's fault. It's always mm -hmm. the, the paranoid situation. All right. So Jeez. it comes down and it grabs at Cade, and just as it's about to put its smoky hands around his neck, a blue force field. Like a personal force field pops up around K, right, right, and Ferocia, and uh, Farouk, and it. Zarr! That's its action. It went after K, but for some reason he's got some sort of uh, right. force field that seems to be protecting him. So now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to go in order here. Um, and of course I didn't write that down. I'm just going to go 14. in the order that I have. You had 14? Yeah. Okay, that's Jim. Uh, nine was Philip, and nine was also... I'm assuming we're ben, within... Right? We're, yeah. Move, attack, move is... Yeah. So yeah. how many things are there now? I, I picture in my head. There's there's the main ghost and then the blackness, right? Yep. But the blackness, then, we believe, is a creature, and it's not a spell. Doesn't look... You didn't see anybody cast anything. Okay. So uh, it's it, let's put it this way: it looks like something that would be considered like a wraith, wraith or wraith, something along right. those lines. Well, I at least have a from weapon. stories that you've heard of of such beings. All right. So, but that having been said, we're going to go to the first person on the. Uh, we're going to go to Jim. What are you doing? I'm going to engage, uh, move toward it, and swing with my sword, uh, and hopefully hit. And then, if I do, I will do something special. Do I have to declare smite? No. Nope. Smite? Good. No. Nope. Okay. You have to. A part hit. of it is the swing. You just have to say when you hit to, that you activate. If I hit, I'm going to activate divine smite. Okay. In, a, in lieu of one of my spells. Okay. Right. Here we go. I add three, uh, plus three strength, and I don't even know what. I, plus one for the sword, so I add plus four. I add four to the die it roll. Sh I should have it down. Uh, it it should on. be under combat here. Combat. I got it. Yeah. Plus five. Plus five. There Reach you go. five, one target. Okay. One day ten plus four. Wow. Eighteen plus five twenty-three. Part of the reason is is you have to use you wield this dual hand. Two handed, got it. Two handed because it's you're smaller, so you have to. Okay, so what'd you roll? I rolled an eighteen plus five twenty-three. Oh, that hits. One hundred percent. Die ten plus four. Yep. And then the divine smite. So uh damage was six from the weapon. Okay. Divine Smite is uh, two die eight plus one die eight plus uh, each level, uh, and it's undead. I'm assuming it's another die eight, so it's six die eight. Did I do that right? There you go. No, no, I'm only third. Five die eight. Okay. Yep. You you were at, it sounds like you're adding correctly. Oh my god. Twenty three. Twenty four more. Divine. Ooh, okay. So a full rock on total of thirty. <laughs> so 
that this is a pretty impressive sight. So basically you haul off and um there's like some sort of energy that crackles along the sword as you uh it's undead, I'm not messing swing. around. Swing. It hits and basically the whole thing lights up and it kind of shrinks in size after you hit it. Okay. And 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 it is it is roughly half the size that it was. Good. So it was it was uh pretty big. So now it's like uh Bigger than you guys still, but it's maybe just a okay. little bit shorter than a, an average human would be. Okay. Okay. All right. So there we go. Well, so who's next up here? We've got uh, Philip Lut- Lutiano. Lutiano. Oh. Oh. I thought so, Philip was next. No, uh, you were a nine. Got a nine. You're tied with Finn. Not so great. being uh, inspired by Big Jim's actions, uh, Lutiano decides to return the favor. And due to complications meta with YouTube, he does not play the actual song, but whistles a theme very similar to Kill Bill. <laughs> uh, for bardic inspiration for Big Jim. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay, so basically what that means is you have a D6 that you can use. On okay, die rolls either... and everything. Yeah, yep, on die rolls. So you can add it to an attack roll. You can add it to a saving throw. Got it. Um, you know, skill check, Thank that you. sort of thing. Okay. Yep. D- do, they don't, uh, you can't add the D6 to damage, though. Right, I'm thinking correctly here. Uh, ability check, attack roll, or saving throw, but not damage. Okay, okay, that's what attack roll is good. Okay, all right. So between Fen and uh, uh, Philip, who who would like to go next? You guys tied. Who's got the higher decks? You're you're muted, up? Ashley. Sorry, mine's, that's mine's, I said the same thing that you did. Whoever has the higher decks. Fourteen. And mine is yeah, twelve. Okay. There you go, Philip. What are you gonna do? Uh, well, first thing is he's going to consider his needs first. So, uh, where is Bella and Milo? Milo is sitting at the table right next to Kay. Okay. okay. And so, uh, the, the critter is right near him, coming at him, right next to him, right? Correct. Correct. And where so, is so Bella? Essentially, Bella is across the room. Okay. She's over I at the bar. I am going to cast Expeditious Retreat. And use it, all my movement and actions to grab Milo and move him out away to safety. Cool. Somewhere. Okay. Okay. I don't. And I hope Milo Bella's looking. Resist. Bella, are you okay? And you know, he's gonna move <laughs> Milo while while he says that. You see, you see Bella over there in the uh, in the uh, protective arms of her husband. Uh huh. Of course. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you're totally able to do that. Not a problem. Milo doesn't doesn't fight you either. He's kind of like a little bit scared. At, yeah, well, essentially scared. He's like really shocked at what's going on. If you haven't seen a ghost before. Excuse me. So, Fen, what are you going to do? Uh, well, first thing she is going to pull out her moon sickle blade, <coughs> um, which uh, gives off uh, moonlight, so additional light. Um, but she isn't going to attack with it right away. Uh, she, I believe that she uses that also for her druid spells Mm -hmm. and um so she's going to see if she can angle herself at a way so that if she misses she hits like the fireplace or something okay (laughs) but she is gonna cast just just don't miss too bad is all i have to say (laughs) (laughs) oh have you have you never seen me roll in my other that's what i'm hoping real bad (laughs) can't be as bad as tom (laughs) i don't know about that Mm. um okay so she's going to uh cast the cantrip produce flame, and she's going to hurl it at um, that dark cloud that is hopefully within 30 feet. I like this a lot, because if you miss, you're only going to burn down the end. Well, so that's why she's standing <laughs> sort of like, if I miss, it'll go right to the fireplace. I got you. I got you. <laughs> and, and Well, here, how many, what kind of points are do people have here, Jay? Does, does she have anything? She three, three, say? two, two. So um, she has three. Three regulars. You can add them any time before. Yeah, just declare them as to hit. And you add them to the D twenty saving right? throws. So one for one point. Yeah. Oh, so so we we add like one or how every, do you every point you, you can add? So if you want to use all three, you can add plus three to hit if you wanted. But they don't. Unless the audience gives us more, they're gone. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, but I have to I have to say beforehand. Yes, yes, they're not specials. Every every ten regulars, you can do a special, which is after. Yeah. Well, it's, it's early. We can burn down this end. 
I'll see how it goes. Plenty of people that'll go ahead. And oh, Jeff that. started uh, handing some out. No. <laughs> hold on, hold on. All right, so I did roll a natural one. You get to re-roll it. <laughs> but I am lucky. You're a half. You're a halfling. It doesn't count. That's right. Re -roll. I I can re-roll <laughs> ones and attack rolls, oh ability checks, and saving throws. Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, that is. Well, I rolled a nine, and then if I can find my. What's your wisdom? Uh, okay, so that is 16, so plus 3. You rolled a 9, 10, yep. 11, 12. That so hit. 12 nice. hits? 12 Perfect. Hits. You got another regular, Ashley. You have 4 now. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, so go ahead and roll your damage for me. All right. Uh, that would be, I think it's 1d8 fire damage. Roll some of these dice I got for free at Gary Con. Nice. Um, Hell just was giving out free dice. It was amazing. <laughs> and I rolled a one. <laughs> one damage. I'm awesome. Great. I I, I want to say thank you on behalf of the Wraith <laughs> and everybody else on his side. They appreciate it very much. So speaking of, it's his turn. He he lets go of Cade, who the three of them are still caught within uh, a force field, right? And they appear to be immobile, like they're just because they don't move or nothing. They just so, so it's a time stop play. almost or something in the force. Something. Field. And so now um, it turns. It is. It is. It is upset. And I have to say, it's going to go after the guardian. That's fine. That's why I'm the here. Guardian just whacked it. I'll be it's like Kevin back. Costner dances with wolves. I'm just going to stand like this on my horse, or just stand there like this. Bring it on. Okay. Bring so, it on. I'll take the damage. Here, here we go. It's a choice. That's a miss. The first attack. Let's roll this second. What energy drain stuff do they do? This is fifth Ooh. edition. Nothing's permanent. Fifteen. This fifteen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it does. Nerf. I'm gonna class sixteen. Uh, with shield, I got shield at eighteen. I have eighteen. Yeah, but you don't have a shield out. You're, you're, That's right. You're I have sixteen. Handed. Okay, it's still missing. Only got a fifteen. <sighs> you're right. <sighs> Dang it. All right. What are you gonna do, Jim? Jim's just going to swing, but I'm not going to smite this time because, like, you know, this, I'm pretending that I'm DMing. I don't want to drain all my abilities right away, right? But I'm oh, going to add ahead. I'm gonna add the inspiration. It's fifth edition. You'll get them back. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to add the inspiration uh, to the to hit roll. Okay. All right, to die six. Okay. Uh, I'm glad I did. Uh, that's a total of 14. That hits. All right, die 10 plus, uh, did I say five? Uh, gosh, die 10 plus three, die 10 plus four, 12. And your sword is magical. Correct? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. So 12 points. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the form of the smoky wraith evaporates. And as it evaporates, the ghost who's standing there still pointing oh, dissipates as well. Couple of moments afterwards, Bella and Bella is closing the door. People are, you know, shutting the shutters, getting the gauze back into place, and starting to relight lamps. And the force field that was surrounding Cade and the others, his other associates, twinks out. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much. I knew you would be the right type of folk to have come along with it. Look what you did! Did I mention that the ghost of uh uh of an evil wizard has been following me around ever since I got out on my mission and has been sending all kinds of wait, wait, nasty wait. beasts. That's not your me. friend. That's not your dead friend. No, of course not. My... Well, who is it? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. What'd you do? Not much of a professor. Well, <laughs> when I was younger. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Philip. I, I, did I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, if you were so educated, I figured you would have researched this to find out already. Well, it didn't happen until we were on the road. I don't have the proper facilities. Hmm. I don't know what it is. I'm assuming it has something to do with that terrible Vecna. Was that not Vecna? Oh, I'm sure it was not. No, I don't think it was. I've never seen a picture of the man myself. Right, but we're all still here. Yeah. Well, 
Could be one of his lackeys for all we know. Or your friend who's dead. Well, I'm afraid he probably is, but I would like to find some proof. <sighs> Maybe him haunting you is the proof. But that ain't him. Well, how do you know what he looks like on the inside? His spirit. Oh. People's spirits look different, sir. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, maybe I don't know. By the way, I want to say that I want to say that taking down this this whatever that vile undead creature was was a team effort that you know we all pitched in together, and without all of us, we wouldn't have been able to do it. And he's not trying to be self facetious; he's trying to sound like you know he's trying to. Yeah, but you hear Daphne over there go, "Whatever, <laughs> stinks." I, from what I saw, nobody did nothing but you. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Just want to praise Philip for trying to protect Bella, of course. Yes, right? absolutely. <laughs> and it Milo. Was the, Milo. It, was a, it was a full team effort. I saved Milo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did. You did. He's a cultural treasure, by the way. Very much so. He is, he is a cultural treasure of uh, Will Absolutely Isle. required to save that man. So In that, front of Bella. Nothing's going to... Uh, nothing else will be happening. Oh, well, that's just too much light. All right, let me do that again. The um, nothing else is going to happen this evening unless you guys want to do something. So I'm going to use my other spell slot to cast Healing Elixir that lasts 24 hours. Okay, just so that you can have it on you. Just so I can have for it till 24 hours. The day for the I got it. Cool. All right. Uh, oh, I got it. We're going to rest now and get everything back. Um. Yeah. Before I go to sleep as well, I'd like to cast Goodberry. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, smart. Okay. Oh, that was snarky. That was so snarky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like... Well, when you've Ooh. lost nothing, it's that, not that yeah, hard. I know. Okay. Okay. Well, Luciano is going to continue to try and work his angle with the elf. <laughs> okay. Um, we all need a good night's rest if we're going to go first thing in the morning at dawn on this canoe. Milo doesn't want to go now, though, does he? Yeah, of course he does. Okay, roll me a D100. There, Luciano. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Actually, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, roll me a d twenty, and then what I want you to do is I want you to add whatever your charisma bonus is to. Uh oh. Oh, I rolled a nineteen. So there are rooms here. And I've got a plus three on my charisma bonus. Yeah, yeah. No, she she uh Please. she seems to to, to uh oh once everybody God. else is like going away and like Cade goes because there's rooms here for people can stay and stuff. Oh, so she doesn't want to be seen with me going into the room is what you're saying. Basically. <laughs> so she slides mm -hmm. you a note. <laughs> Troy just okay. came, Troy That's just it. cheered another fifteen hundred. That's thirty regulars for you, Will. Just because I for was me. being snarky, yes. What? Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna bring the pain. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> well, being a swamp at all, I will take what I can get. So I make my way I... to the room, of course. Okay, excellent, excellent. Well, you you have I, I I don't know. I'm just gonna assume a fun night. So we'll just leave it at that. You know that know. works. <laughs> so let's keep it clean for the kids. Right? <laughs> well, I would like to talk to Milo to the side, and I'm gonna use my persuasion totally. ability. Because Milo is getting ready to go back to his house. Right. To go to sleep. Now, I'd like to walk with him and try to persuade him as maybe he should take a pass on this being that he's one of our elders in the town who needs to be here when the rest return from their outgoing. There we and go. He's... Change it. You do know that Milo has an ego about him. Okay. Right. There's two things he has an ego about. One being the number one guide in the swamp. And two, canoe making. And being the best canoe maker in all of the the Rushmore's, not the not just Willow Isle, but anywhere in the swamp. I'm going to try to emphasize the importance of his skill for this whole entire culture in canoe making, and try to get him to see that it's since he's such an esteemed member of the community, our major leaders are gone. He should remain so that he could convey what's going on in the in the gravitas of the situation, and still be here to preserve this cultural treasure of this canoe making. And I'm going to, you know, yeah, use roll. all my charm and persuasion skill. I can. That's good. Cool. Idea. Roll, roll D20, add your, add your charisma to it. You're a charismatic guy. It says persuasion plus five. There you go. So I add my charisma. So just add to five. Add to five then. Because you already have the skill. 16 total. 
he sees the logic in that. His canoes are more important than the information because you can just give him the information. And if he takes a rubbing of the stone, he'll always know where it's at and he can add it and go at his leisure. Yeah. He agrees. He agrees. Wow. Good job. So in the morning, um, before, okay, he doesn't say this. So you do that. That's good. Not a problem. Jim, uh, after all that excitement calms down, the uh, inn is calming down. People are getting uh, done for the evening or what have you. Bella comes up to you and she says, I, I, I think it's really important that you probably follow these people. And we'll say this is after the news has been brought back by Philip that Milo is not going to go. It might be pretty important just to go with these people to see what they're doing. Don't you think? Jim agrees. <laughs> I agree. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, no, I thought I'm you were multi right. I'm multitasking everywhere. You know how I normally yeah, am. No, it's totally cool. I'm sorry about I'm just, that. Just, I'm just messing with you. So, um, so she basically has a talk with you and essentially is just saying that with everybody else gone, and Freda out in the swamp, and without her consulting on this, it would probably be best for you guys to go Thanks, Garner. with them. And she says that when Freda shows up, she'll let her know so that she can follow you guys as, as fast as she can. So, all right. So if, if nobody has anything else to, to do this fine evening, then uh, basically... We'll skip ahead to the morning. Okay, so so before before my night is done, did I get any more information out of uh, Feriosa? During yeah, you can, you can try. Uh, uh, <laughs> give me another persuasion roll. It's a 13 on the roll. And for persuasion, I'm adding wisdom or in Charisma. Persuasion, you should have a skill on your sheet. Let me, let me check a look here. Uh, Can unroll that leather. Persuasion. Was it sweating gross? Oh, yeah, of course it is. You said charisma. Gives it. Oh, you don't have persuasion. Ah. Uh, so, so it would be for you just your flat charisma. So you add the three. So it'd be sixteen then. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Um. I will say this much that it, with um, the pillow talk, okay, uh, you're able to find out that. She thinks that Kate is an idiot and that um, he's told her basically the same bullshit line about a compatriot from the university. And it's like, this guy's no more of a professor than my foot is. Huh. And that's, that's her general consensus. So, but his gold is very real. All right. So in the morning when I high five Philip, I'm going to share that information with him. Okay. <laughs> okay. So F it's the morning. You guys are getting ready. You're getting ready to roll. Fen's so got I'm... nine regulars now. I've got 30, did you say? 30. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> Alex has got three for his, and Tim and I have two. And yes. Man. It's all good. It's, it's okay. all right, man. I, I, it, what goes around comes around in the old days, right? Yep. Right. Oh, I remember. So the the party has two canoes being provided for them. These are deluxe liners, multi-passenger canoes. Well, at least the one is because it's got the humans in it, and then you have the kid-sized one. It's got all the halflings in it. So all Ours the is half far more maneuverable, though. Far more maneuverable. So there's four of you. <clears throat> you four are in one canoe, and then we have the humans in their canoe. Okay. And uh, the uh, uh, I will say also because really Milo, uh, say what? How many humans? The human and the uh, elf and half one. Yeah, they're going to be in one. Uh, I should say yeah, because there's only one human. So the uh, uh, Cade yeah. and his 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 other two associates are in one canoe, and then the halflings are all in one canoe. 
I will say also that Milo kind of gave uh, a little sketch out of basically where you will be going uh, so that you guys could follow his directions on that and where the general vicinity is for. Okay. Um, again, it's summer. So it is hot. The one thing I didn't mention also uh, about summertime, and this is only going to affect and how how appropriate since how Jay is the one who made the role. Yeah, it's all right. Um, any character wearing armor heavier than leather must make a DC 10 constitution check every five hours. Okay. On a failure, you will gain one level of exhaustion. DC, right, exhaustion so... is... Uh, can be a bitch when it starts at stacking up. Right. So uh, uh, a, a die ten on con, which means what? What do I need to get on that? No, die? no. You're, it's a it's it's a DC a ten. Oh, I, on a die, die twenty. 10, sorry. Do I use the con yeah. modifier for that? So I need Correct. eight actually on the dice. Yep. Okay. Yep. You're use, oh, yep. you just tell me when to roll it, and I'll roll it because I do. Um, we're gonna say basically, I'm gonna have you roll it now because what's going to happen if anything happens uh, won't be until after you've been out in the heat for a while and we'll say that it's at the second leg of the trip. So just go ahead and give me the roll now. I'm going to add my, my the only two regulars I have to this. Okay. So, so I think it's six or better on a die 20, right? There you go. <laughs> six. Ooh. Roll it exactly. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So you're good for now. Basically. Uh, I don't want the exhaustion. We, we yeah. probably won't need another roll uh, on this leg of the trip. Probably. We'll see. Okay. So you're you're going along. You're in the canoe. Hey, you guys are following the uh, uh, the the map of uh, that Milo has given you. And Philip, you start to feel the communications of the great old one, the boa. It is more of a sense a foreboding of there's something not quite right ahead of you. Mm. It's something that doesn't belong in the swamp. And it is something that if you can do something about it, you should do something about it. But to be careful, because Boa feels that it is very dangerous. Mm. And you can feel the presence of it getting closer. This it's ominous like a gnawing. Feeling. Yeah, it's like a gnawing at the back of your neck. Mm. I feel the dread. Boa speaks to me. Something is bad. Something is out of balance. Fen, there's something that's unnatural. Yeah, does it have anything to do with the ghosts and, you know, like Vecna? Well, that was unnatural. It, <laughs> it, you basically, and this is basically how Boa kind of like communicates with you. It's like you get a feeling of basically that, yes, it, they're, they're feelings and what have you, what you get. You get signs and pertents and, and, yes. and feelings and what have you. And you feel that they are connected in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. Where you guys are going through the swamp right now on your canoes is deep water. Right. Now the swamp has varying levels of, you know, water in all kinds of different places. The, uh, the draft of the canoes is so shallow that it doesn't really matter much. You're able to go wherever you want this particular place. It's almost, you're thinking that it's gotta be roughly five to six feet deep water ish. At least the Druid for sure. You can, yeah, you know, it's a natural thing. You pretty much know it. So, so, so much, so deep is the water that if some poor halfling were to fall overboard, <laughs> especially one with armor on. Oh yeah, exactly. Okay. So there we go. So why are you wearing armor in the canoe? <laughs> someone needs red as a baked potato. <laughs> yeah, someone needs to. Someone needs to. Someone needs to take all the damage and absorb all the uh, attacks. I have no problem doing that. If I'm uncomfortable for a little while, I'll, 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 I'll personally. Well, Jim, I'll do whatever I can to help save you if you fall in. 
Should we, you know, tie a rope around him and then tie it to the canoe so we can just pull him up like an anchor? That's not a bad idea. Well, if <laughs> sure, you can tie a rope yeah. around me. All right, she'll tie a rope around you and then tie one end to, to the They've canoe. got those bars that go across in the middle of the canoes and whatnot. You could tie it to that. And I'm sure it wouldn't be enough to flip the canoe. This is a big canoe compared to him. So, yeah. So but if it gets, but if he is grabbed by some giant monster that's pulling, I'll make sure a dagger is ready to cut the rope just yeah. in case. There you go. You, you got to be careful. Fen, uh, you, got a, you got another regular. So you have 10. So now you can even convert them to a special if you want. Which is after the fact, yes. What is this? Oh, after the fact. Yes, so if you mm-hmm. yes, if you need you could yeah, if you needed to make something and you didn't you know and you failed. You can it, trade ten in. Is that for the? Uh, oh no no no! It's for an inspiration reroll. point, right, Tim? How'd you do it? In, uh, yeah, it's your, it's your choice. Well, what you want to tend to be a turn in for? You trade you trade in the ten. You can re-roll the roll. Yes, it's a re-roll. Okay. It's a re-roll instead. You can do a re-roll. Right. You can use them all individually if you want, but now with ten, you can do a re- full re-roll. So. Um, good to know. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Yep. You got. Yeah. Will's got so three you're, of them. You're getting closer, <laughs> and whatever the bad thing is, is very close. And you start to notice there's essentially this is like it's sort of like a stream that's running through the uh, swamp, and this is kind of what you're navigating at this point in time. Like, like the undulating body of the old boa. Exactly. Gosh. <laughs> Along the outskirts of this, there After are. After last huge night, let me tell you about undulation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so you feel you feel something, uh, Luton. You hear feel something hit you. You look over and see she chucked like a wad of paper at you, some kind of crap. <laughs> so, um, in the trees. The druid, Fen, for sure. And uh, Philip, being as connected to the swamp, you notice it right away. There is be, there's an inordinate amount of birds. Lots of birds. Okay. And they're all just... And they're starting... And it's starting to become like kind of a racket. So forth. And... Uh, is it anything I could understand with the chittering? Oh yeah, you could totally uh, chitter with one of these uh, one of these guys. You'd have to get uh, like the boat a little bit closer that they could they could hear you, but it's one hundred percent you could. Are they crows? There's crows in there for sure. Okay, but there's a bunch of different ones. There's different. There's like magpies. There's all kinds of swamp birds that I don't know are up in there. You know, but yeah. <clears throat> so that's lots of food in the area. If we can so, get closer, I might be able to understand what they're talking about. Well, yeah. They're probably calling us. Here comes more fodder for something. Do so those you, birds seem natural or unnatural? Oh, they're natural. Okay. They're natural. Um, Philip, you definitely get the impression, though, the reason that... You, First of all, Druid, you know right off the hand the fact that there's this many in a concentrated area. Super rare. This is not natural. Especially with there being so many different types. Because if I'm not mistaken, some of them would drive off the other ones. Mm. But they're they're all in, like, hanging out, right? They all seem pretty content. They're pretty uh, rambunctious. Rah, 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 and they are, of course, watching you guys, right? Um, you take the canoe a little bit closer to where these um, birds are all hacking about and stuff. And with the chitter, is there, do you have to, you don't have to do a roll or anything with the chittering, do you? Let's double check here. I think it's just. Uh, it just says whistling DC 10 action. DC 10. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to roll and you're going to add your um, charisma and you're going to add. So it should be five. You have plus five to it. Should be pretty easy to make. That's a 12. Okay, you got it. Um, Essentially, they are very excited for the food that is coming. Yeah. And you are the food. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. And very excited to see what mother does. Perhaps you don't want to know what I just found out. Mother? 
<laughs> Not mother? He, of course, explains what he just communicated through hums and whistles with the birds. Backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. What do you think mother is? Backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. It's probably, so, well, if these birds are drawn to it, it could be any Row, row away things. from this area. I say, I, I say, what are you doing over there? I, row it away like from the area. To birds. Yeah, they, they're interested in, there's, there's something danger in the area. There's it can't be something underwater because if it pulls us underwater, the birds don't get the food, right? Yeah, that's not necessarily true because stuff will flow to the top. Um, if it bloats up. Oh, you're almost right on top of it, Philip. Well, I, I I'm sure. like backpedaling away. Like, he's, he's, so he's away. so Philip's like pedaling the other oh, way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah, you yeah. guys we're, pedaling the other way too? We're, like, we're, we're going, I'm them? not going into that area. I mean, it's stupid. The caves are like, I, where are you going? I thought we were supposed to go this way. We're are your we guide. Why don't you shut up and follow? Oh, yeah, you got that right. All right, let's follow them. Right about then, the birds just go crazy and take the flight all over. It's just like, and Great. as the birds clear in a particular area, almost as if where they left, you see flying yeah. a very large cow-sized crow oh. slash undead bony thing. Nice. And uh, it's a niche time, fellas. Bony. Yes, it is definitely it, it. It has appearances like you can see parts of its bones and stuff like that, but it doesn't seem to be decaying in any sorts. It definitely seems like some sort of amalgam of like uh, a bird and some sort of creepy demonic thing. It sounds like someone created this almost, right? Yeah. Maybe. Okay, well, that was a terrible roll. You guys all get to go first, so let's figure out who goes in what order. All right. Uh, 16 <laughs> plus 2, 18. Okay, so... So how do we do initiative again? Because I might... Die 20 so you roll d20, decks. add your decks. D20? I rolled d10 last time. Well, no wonder you were so low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no wonder. That was a 15 total, Will, for me. Okay. Two. I got a 15 as well. Wow. Okay. Tim, they get three. Twenty-one. Oh, Ooh, good. You can go right. first. Good. I I don't want to go first. Go for all it. All right. So, Philip. Um, yeah. Old Boa sends you the uh, message of "That's it. <laughs> Kill it." I know just what to do. I'm sure you do. Go for it. <laughs> okay. You gonna I'm cast gonna that cast spell? Earthbind on it. Yeah, I knew you would. Okay, so let's see here. Let me go and check out what that DC on that thing is. Uh, explain Earthbind. to the good folk what Earthbind is. Earthbind is, I have it written here if you want. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Choose one creature you can see within range. Range is 300 feet. Yellow strips of magical energy loop around the creature. Target must be uh, succeed on a strength saving throw or its flying speed is reduced to zero feet for the spell's duration. Airborne creature affected is... Pulled down at 60 feet per round until it reaches the ground. And I want to point out that the ground is well underwater. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope it drowns. So this is, okay. this is, it's, uh, well, it's this is how we d discern eight. what your DC is. So you start at eight. We take whatever your spell casting modifier is. You are a warlock. You use charisma. Your charisma is 16, correct? Yes. So we have a three, so eight, nine, ten. So there's eleven. And your third level, which gives you a proficiency bonus of two. Okay. So okay. thirteen is your DC. All right. Okay. So that's, that's what you, you have spell DC is thirteen. Yep. So this is what I have to roll in beat for the creature. Dude, you remember you got 30 regulars. Oh, I don't yeah, I do. Shut up, Jay. But you know what? <laughs> I can 13's nothing. I can beat a 13. Got twelve, but I'm gonna I'm gonna cash in ten and re-roll it and re-roll it. There so you now go. I've only got twenty. Here we go. All right, nineteen. We're good. All right. So the vines <laughs> they come out of the water. They're like roots, and, and vines go skyrocketing up. 
reaching for this thing, and it just kind of goes, it just zoom. It just zips out of the way and flies in the different direction. That's disappointing. Yeah, it is got rid of 10 of his regular, so it was worth it. <clears throat> and the good thing, remember, these are not, you didn't memorize one spell. You have what? You got spell slots. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh-huh. Okay, well, that having been said, uh, Jim. It's at range, correct? Yeah, I was definitely within range. A range of swing? You, no, or range. No, no. You, I was thought you were talking your bow. Right? Yeah, I'll shoot. I'll shoot short bow. Okay. Normal shot. Um, I don't think I'm going to do anything else. So just normal shot. Mm-hmm. All right. Plus five to hit. Nine plus five, 14. 14 to hit. Six plus two. Four. Okay, so, all right. It sticks in it. It doesn't really seem to notice it, but it, okay. it's sticking it. Yep. Okay. Now, well, uh, it's its duration is one minute with concentration. So can I try again next round using the spell? Yeah, that's a good question because it doesn't really say in there. Um, this is what I'll say. Okay. Uh, okay. You are now going to have to, I, I will allow you to continue to concentrate. You have to concentrate. Yep. So you can't do anything else. Okay. But you will be allowed to try and hit it. Okay. Provided it gets within range. Okay. So right now it's not in range, but it might fly back over into that area. Somebody might even push it that way. If you know what I'm saying. So there we go. So that's what we'll do. I will let you know when it comes in range. And then basically I'm assuming you'll have a held action. At this right. point, whenever it comes in range, you're going to try and grab it's it. Its range is 300 feet. Oh, hell yeah. So that's yeah. plenty. That's good. So, um, all right. So uh, that was Jim. Loot. Lutiano. Uh, Loot is going to reach into his pocket, pick out a, a nice, well-rounded rock, and throw it at it. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, so that's going to be a 24 with the bonus. Oh, yeah. You got him. You hit him. And that's going to be six total. Okay. Well, you guys are doing new. You're getting up there. You know, 10 points of damage. That's something. All right, Finn. All right. Uh, she is going to take out um, some moon seed pods and a piece of opalescent field spar and she is going to angle it in such a way and cast moonbeam on nice. it Ooh. um so a shaft of bright moonlight comes down um it, i've got 120 feet range on this and it's 40 feet high of a cylinder um as the light becomes concentrated and just um, spikes down on this creature. It's a five foot radius and it can last up to a minute with concentration. Yeah. Uh, They would have to make a constitution saving throw. All right. And I do believe your DC is also 13. It is. Okay. It fails. Okay. All right. I'm going to spend 10 points. <laughs> to re-roll? And I'm going to re-roll. All right. Well, you can fail, certainly fail, try. Fail. Damn, I rolled a 12. <laughs> so you're down to 10. There you go. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to Try again, again, Will. Try no, again. no, no. I'm saving that for later when it's got to bust out of something. <laughs> okay. So that's a hit. So that's going to do some damage to it. That's 2d10 radiant, correct? Let's see here. This is a to second level. You don't have any third level spells. Okay, so it has. All right. So 2d10 radiant damage. Okay. That is seven radiant damage. Okay. On that. And it moves how much? Because it can it... you can move it. Oh, uh I so I can use an action and move the beam up to 60 feet. 
It is it. okay. So six <laughs> sixty feet. Got it. All right. That's good. That's really good. Okay. So it's uh it's turn finally. Okay. So it just got hit by that. It was missed by that. I gotta say, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna be just 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 fair all around fair. So uh, Jay, you're one. Uh, Ashley, you're two. Uh, Alex, you're three. And Tim, you're four. Here we go. Two. Oh, going after the druid. Okay. So it is super. Makes sense. You just hit it with a big old beam. So it's not happy with you. It is flying, swooping down at you. Okay. <laughs> it is going to try and grab you with its claw. Oh, man. Okay. Which, which, your, which your AC? Uh, I believe it's 12. I can't intercept either. I don't have my shield out. I got my bow out. Right? Okay, let's see. Let's see right here. Boop, 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 boop. AC, 12. Yep. All right, here we go. Mm, miss it, Newton. Miss. Miss. Uh, 23. <laughs> <laughs> You got another five back, Scottish Jeff. There, will you're up to fifteen? Oh, again. I got another five. Yeah, okay. they're really pounding it up on the on the DM here. All right. Well, I haven't. That's only fifteen. I gotta save ten for one reroll. Yep, yep. And then I have to spend the other ones beforehand. But that's it. It swoops by you, grasps, misses, tears your cloak or whatever a piece of your clothing, and passes by. Unfortunately. All right. Well, unfortunately, that's it. So we're going to go right back to the top Maybe again. does he so does Phillip... he take a swoop at the other canoe? Perhaps. Matt, Matt that's what I was wondering. Matt. What are they doing? Oh, oh yeah, the other canoe. What are they doing? <laughs> a blue force just sitting there field. watching us. <laughs> a blue force field goes around the canoe. Yeah, and all the just, other guys. no, yeah, that's the NPC useless factor here. So it's yeah, fine. yeah, it's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, no, you know what? I'll say this. This is what's happened instead of the force field this time. All the little birds seem to be swarming their boat, keeping them occupied. Okay. Yeah, see, that's even more thematic. All right. So, uh, all right, uh, Philip, it is going to pass once more. Okay, so uh, I have to roll. I'm going to spend my five. Thank you, Scottish Jeff. Right, on the saving throw. On the saving throw. God well, I have to roll it. to hit, though, right? No, I just rolled the saving throw. Uh, and I uh, fail. I fail. So if it gets the... caught up. Yeah, I rolled a two. <laughs> and it, it gets caught up in the wrappings and what have you and gets pulled down into and the water. And there's all, like all these bubbles and stuff. That are... And now the old boa will take you into deep water and help you discover yourself. I used that line last night, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's it's not me. Oh my That's gosh! <laughs> you that... get <laughs> you get a feeling. From Boa saying that's not gonna kill it. I was a I I know it's undead, man. But we can now try to stab it on to the, down there. It's and it far. can't do anything. Well it's it's uh, it's under the water, but I will say this so long as you continue to concentrate, you can so you can oh, like, okay. bring it up to the surface with those. It is currently caught. It can try to escape, though. Yeah, we'll do Big that Jim, too. I caught it. I'll bring it up so you can whack it with your sword. Uh, there you go. So here, this is the, we're going to need a little bit of teamwork now. So you're going to concentrate to keep the tendrils and things to bring it back up to the water. Big Jim's going to be getting his sword out to whack it. Who's going to be making sure the canoe is going where it needs to go? Who's driving the canoe? Lover boy. Lover boy. Luciano, <laughs> oh, Fen, did, did, did that two guy. of you, or do you that want guy. just Luciano to do it, and then and Fen, you're just gonna like uh, light it up with some magic or something as well? Well, I'm still concentrating on that moonbeam. <laughs> oh, that's right, I totally forgot. Okay, so you've Trust got that. Me. I know you've how to steer it. a canoe. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <you> so this. <laughs> no, maybe we don't know. Uh... Okay, so so this is what we're gonna say is what I need from you, um, 
is I need you to give me a uh, strength check. Okay. I'm going to say your DC. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, I know. I'm going to say your DC <laughs> is 12. So it's not a it's not a big one, you know, because this is a, a Milo canoe, and if there's one thing you can say about a Milo canoe, they are maneuverable. So now, do do you have any points? Does he have any? Uh, he's got uh, he's got three regulars. Three regulars. So you got three that you can use. Yes. <laughs> okay. So just roll me a d twenty. You want to get above a twelve? You use you them. have what's your what's your strength? Do you have a strength bonus? Negative one. Excellent. So minus one <laughs> from that. So you got a plus two, we'll say then. <laughs> Use those three regulars. Uh oh. Yeah, that was bad. Contrary to last night, I am not steering the canoe correctly today, apparently. Gotcha. Well, you're trying. I think we know who was steering last night. <laughs> <laughs> so what's all this about means, leverage and I don't have it. What this means is is just this simple. The canoe is going to be, you're going to have a hard time. You got all these tendrils uh, of, right. of like roots and things bringing it up. It bumps the boat. Okay. So, Ashley, roll me 1d4. Oh, this is whoever. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, it's, it, it's not going to be that bad. Two. Okay. Jay, you get minus two to your attack. Okay, fair enough. I, so I'll live with that instead of falling off the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, that that comes later when it tries to grab you. <laughs> yeah, well, we got to. It's, it's okay. Right. So it is brought back up by Philip. Okay, so next person in line, of course, is Jim. So I'm going to ask a dumb question. Should I get an advantage on this if it's tied up? You would. One hundred percent. That. Plus, not only plus three instead of plus five. Rolling two dice. Mm -hmm. Uh, a two, but the other one's a 19. So 19 plus yeah, three, 22. I uh, will also uh, divine smite because it's undead. Okay. Because why not? And and I, I got the one recharge from last night, so I have three of them, three spell slots, correct? Yep. All right. All right. So damage was 14, uh, nine plus, uh, no, 13. Nine plus four, 13. And then let me roll the damage on the divine smite. Wow. 29 more. Okay. And how much is the extra for a deck? Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, because of my level, it's five die eight instead of four die eight. No, no, that's okay. no. It's six die eight. You're right. You're right. Oh my gosh, another two. So another two added onto that. So thirty one, forty three points of damage. 40, 44. Forty four. It doesn't it's... look good. It doesn't look good. But it is still alive. And it doesn't appear like the uh, extra undead damage you did did did, did okay. damage. Okay. And now that it's close up, you can just like that's kind of more. Well, wait, not just undead. I think you do extra for demonic. Yeah, demonic. absolutely. Okay, then it so did. Take, then it yeah, did so, work. so it, did it says work. undead it or fiend for the maximum. It so it's all yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we're good. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was about to. That's all right. But, yeah. All right. So next up is loot. Uh, you're still keeping the boat. Uh, uh, so uh, give me another strength check. Let's see how, how well this yeah. one works. <coughs> 10 total. Okay, excellent. So, uh, no, yeah, excellent. Nice. <laughs> Ashley, go ahead and roll me a d4 again. That's a three. Oh, okay. So minus three off your next attack there, Jim. Okay. All right. So, and then last up is Fenn. What are you going to do? She's going to angle that piece of opalescent feldspar and mm -hmm. try to get it with the moonbeam again. Okay. Little to the left. And this <laughs> is the constitution, right? Yep. What was in DC was 13. 13. Excellent. We made it. So it's, I'm assuming, half damage this time. It is half damage. Um, so let's see what we got. All right. So that's nine. Okay. So half of nine got would it. be what you take. I don't know if you round up or round down or what. I, think I always round down. 
He I don't know always what he says rounds down. Listen to him. I know. <laughs> okay. All right. So it is its turn. And Go for it, it reaches out with its claws. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. These are at disadvantage because it is being held, but it is in within grabbing range. So the first one, all right, it's going to grab Philip or attempt to grab Philip. The second one, how appropriate, Jim. Okay. So we're going to do Jim's first. I'm rolling two dice. We'll take the, the worst of the Are two. Are we sure it can still attack when it's being bound? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it's when it sure? close up. Yeah, yeah. Totally Tim, sure. It's I'm a disadvantage, DM. Tim. It's the odds of it hitting or, or, or like and here's, here's, infinitesimal. Here's, Ask here's one more Philip. time. <laughs> ah, bless it. All right. So if there's two misses. Disadvantage right, is huge. But, oh, math. you know what I should have done? No, I made it attack. All right. I should have had to try and break free. I wasn't thinking. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, well, it's too late now. Okay. Go right back to the top of the order. Philip. Okay, concentrate. We're still good. It should have tried to break out. It didn't. Okay, Jim. Oh my gosh. Do, do I cheese it? And I, I have two left. Do I cheese it and divine smite again? You have a feeling that if you were to land a divine smite, it might kill it. All right, so I'm going to do it. I'll burn my second one. It's, it's a, the hell with casting spells, right? That's what I say. You don't need those. <laughs> He's way too but happy about you doing this. It's minus three on this attack. <laughs> Uh, that missed. I, if I'm, yes! I missed. I rolled it. I rolled a two and missed. Yeah. I cool. Missed. All right. Missed. Excellent. Big Jim, you had one job. <laughs> one job. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Luke. Uh, go ahead. Uh, give us the. Uh... Given the roll, and I almost forgot. I have jack of all trades, so that puts oh. one back in. Yeah. There you go. But that's not going to help us at all. Okay. Uh. Excellent. Ashley. I think it's time for that four. I can feel it. Oh, you can do it. Four I one. Come you. on. No. It's a Big four. Money. It's a four? <laughs> it's a four. All right. Minus four in your next deck there, Jim. No. Okay. So it's it okay. is its turn. It's going to try and break out because it realized, hey, I should probably try and do that. So let's see. To break out of the earth vine, what does it need? Maybe I can try to charm it. No, I can't. I'm concentrating never mind. Yeah, let's see. I don't think you can charm a demon or undead in anyway, can you? Oh, uh, does he know? I don't know if Philip knows that. Yeah. You usually do other things while you're concentrating. concentrating. Just as long as you don't do another concentration. Just as long spell. as it's not another spell. Yeah, I think it's still, yeah, I think it's. You know, well, you could do we were spell, kind of. just not a con spell. We were, yeah, because the okay. other thing I was saying is, is kind of over because you have it now. Directing it was. Taking up all of it. So technically, yeah, you could do something else if you wanted to. Which is, I'm glad I, you know. Rob says Eldritch Blast now. still works. So there you go. Yep, Eldritch Blast. Yep. Okay, let's see here. Da -da. Do zero, airborne. Wow, there's no. Um, okay, it attacks again because there is no um, break the spell. Well, there's five. a strength. Right. Is there? I just read it. I didn't see it. The target must succeed on a strength saving throw or its flying speed is reduced. Oh, right there. Uh, I skipped over that part. Hey, thanks for finding that for me. All right, here we go. So DC is um, 13 on that. That's good. That's real good. I think you can do this. Here we go. Okay, that's good. So it breaks free. We got it exactly. 13. 13 is your DC, right? Yeah, but it doesn't attack if it breaks free this round, right? No, it's no attacks. It just that's breaks good. Free. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Good. That means I can do something else then, right? It that's breaks fine. free yeah. and then is able to move its movement, which is sixty feet. <laughs> that doesn't get away from me. All right, no, so... it doesn't get away from the moonbeam either. <laughs> All right, Luciana, you got three now. I have two, so it's ten, three, two, two for the players. And oh, oh Jeff popped out another one. So, uh, okay. Fen, you got 12, uh, Lucia is four, and Philip and I each have three regulars now. Thanks, Jeff. There you go. So, Fen's got 12 right. regulars. Philip, top of the order. Thanks, Jeff. 
Philip, you're good. You got three regulars oh, now. I'm going. Oh, thank you. I'm going to uh, do Eldritch Blast, yeah. and also I'm going to use my Eldritch Invocation to go with it. <laughs> okay. So basically, it's a roll to hit. You're going to get the plus five to your roll. What does that's a D10? That's a dirty doing. 20. Cool, that's a hit. So I do one die 10 and then I push it 10 feet. Is there a way to mm -hmm. slam it into a tree? <laughs> you can do it so you could slam it back into the water. That is just cruel. Yeah, that sounds good though. Okay, all right. Slam, I did four. Okay. That's what you. That was your roll to hit. I rolled no, a twenty. Rolled 20 to hit. Oh, that's 20. right. You're, 20 yeah, yeah. I rolled right. one die ten. I think it, it says die ten. Yeah, you had the dirty twenty. Yeah, that's and it. then I, um, I don't get a plus on it. No, no. There's other things that'll come later. But a repelling, blast repelling blast. So I it push it, it down ten. So it, it splashes it black, back down into the water. Okay. Good. All right. Jim, is it close gonna, enough for uh, me? To, is it close enough for me to swing at it, splashing into water? So I got to. No, it is not. You uh, will have to. You you can work in conjunction with loot to. to no, it. no, he's useless. Okay. When it comes to when it comes to the canoe, you, right? You, yes. <laughs> not when it comes to the world of love. So, I'll shoot. I'll I'll shoot the short bow. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, this is minus four for this mm -hmm. round, right? So that's a, yep. uh, it's a 13, but plus two for the deck. So I rolled 17, 15. 15? Yeah. 15 hits. All right, so die six plus two. Six. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's not looking good. It's got like some kind of like funky green stuff oozing out of it in different cool. places. Uh, yeah. Cool. It's definitely past the bloody part for those who use such the gooey gore. Okay. All right. So now we're going to loot. Okay. Loot can still say something. So in Bardic Inspiration and yeah. in Postman like fashion, he says, <laughs> There you go. Halfling Starkey says good things are going to happen. Halfling Starkey. And that's horrible. That was uh, definitely not a good roll. Okay, well, it takes, uh, this round is more so, we won't say that there's any minus to an attack because basically you have to get back over to it. You're paddling, and your paddling doesn't allow you to get over to it before it will have the action to try and get out of the water. All right, fair enough. So, okay. So, uh, Finn. She's going to use her action to move the moonbeam to wherever this creature is right now, it. and then bam, okay. attack. All right, here we go. Constitution. Excellent. Natural 20. It is good. So it only take half damage. Yeah, and, and I rolled a seven. Get. So Yes. Yeah. So okay. half a seven. Three Yay. points. I'm yep, three points. Slowly just chipping away at this undead bird. Okay, so it's turn. And it's like screw this. <laughs> it's it, ah! it gets up out of the water and it's flying away again. Oh, geez. okay. All right, so that's pretty much its turn. Philip, how far away does it get? Uh, I'm gonna say it gets basically half its distance, which is like thirty feet. Okay. Blam. Okay. It's definitely not gonna outrun your Eldritch Blast. Let's put it that way. I'm gonna blast it again. Okay. With the same sort of trying to get it back in the water again. Now okay. it, it now it does say that it, it makes it in a straight line. It does say the Eldritch the repelling is in a straight uh, line. Don't worry about that. All right. So I was being honest. Yeah. Cool. Now I oh. play pool. I know how you can do it. Eleven. So, ah uh, misses. <laughs> woo! It flies. Woo! It's gone. Okay, good. All right. So now we go to uh Jim. He'll shoot. That's all he can all do. Right. Yeah, go ahead. No minuses this time. Nope. But I missed. Excellent. Oh, yeah. things are looking up for mother. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. Loot. Uh, let's see. Is he out of stones throw? No, no, because you can throw how far? Uh, that's what I was just checking here. It's gotta uh, be more. It's gotta be at least thirty. 
Yeah, it's, it's got more be. than that. Uh, it's probably sixty. Scroll, scroll, scroll. It should be. Oh, there's your combat right here. Throw uh, 20, 20 to 60. sixty. Yep. Okay, so it's going to be at long distance. So basically, what that means is it'll be a disadvantage. Okay. It's a seventeen on the roll. Ooh, that's good. That's a hit. Advantage. Wow. Good job. He yeah. can throw rocks like nobody's business. And that's a uh, six total. Wow. Oh, okay. That's really good. Okay. It's so close. Some more green gunk goes splattering off of it. Ugh. Okay. Ugh. All right. So, uh, Finn. Um, as long as it's still within 120 feet of me, I can uh -huh. move that moonbeam up to 60 feet and see if I can still get it. Just yes. angle yes. it right and just pow. Excellent. I roll 19 this time. Half right. damage. So it's okay. going to half so damage again. again. Half. It's going to get away. Oh, okay. Um, so that's 13. Nice. Oh, okay. Six. Is it enough? Yep. It's no, get... it is not enough. All right, well, it's not going to bother us anymore. Well, how far does it get in the next time it flies? It's, uh, well, here's the problem with it. It's flying over canopy. So it's going to get oh, he, 60 he, feet away from you, but you're going to get not going to be able to see it because of the, the trees. Uh, it flies away. Okay. You feel Bo is disappointed. But you also, <laughs> you also feel that Boa knows that you will take care of this for her at some point. Mother uh, Luke's God. Loot is going to communicate with the birds to keep attacking the NPCs for a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> and they do so. That's awesome. And then and then there's a big ball of fire that happens over the uh, their canoe, and a bunch of the birds fall into the, oh. to the water, and they're oh. away. Look at that. They have spells. Is that, oh my goodness. Did you see all those birds attacking us? That was extraordinary. Oh. It was a good thing I was able to activate this ring I have. It was a gift from my uncle. And it uh, was able to destroy all these terrible birds. Too quick I see to... the birds didn't kill you or impede you in any way. I just have to get him to burn more of that later. <laughs> well, too quick, uh, how are we on time? We doing all right? We're good. We're fine. It's uh, What's everybody else? I had planned for uh, basically a four-hour session. Do you, does everybody okay? Do I need to, to no, just, break that down? Okay, we take a quick three. I was going to say, after yeah, this, just, I was going to say, yeah. if anybody wants to go ahead and take a break now, that's... Quickie one. So uh, so here are here are Will's five publications. You, uh, winner, winner gets their choice of two of these. All right? So just note that. Um, and also, we will have um, we will have a Troller Games uh, gift certificate as well. So let's do a quickie three. I'll, I'll do a... We'll be back. And as soon as I'm back, I'll bring it back to the screen. Sound good? Yeah. Sound good? Yeah, Everyone good I'll for that? It. Okay. All right. need a refill. All right. Yeah, sounds, I, need yeah I need the old man stuff. Uh, Old man stuff. Wrong button. Wow, there's a lot of jokes left open there. Jake. I didn't. I know. I know. Oh gosh, what, what the heck? My stream deck didn't. All right. All right, we're back. Cool. And we just we're almost. We just got the last encounter. So it's yeah. Thanks, Will. That's why I was all set to use the whistle. I'm like, except against undead or constructs. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, but it was it was it was a team. It just yeah. has undead. Kind of you got me That's what I was saying to somebody in chat. Even if we had winged it, it still was flying no matter what we did. Yeah. No, the saving thing is the, the earth bind. He had to earth bind, got him down, so it's like there's not much to do at that point. Because if it doesn't have earth bind, it's it's just like grass and it takes them. Yeah. I ended up having to change my D20. That last one was killing me. Yeah, yeah, that one needs to go by the way. <laughs> All right.
everyone hope you're enjoying this this is our first of many guest dmgm spots on the channel um and we have uh, one coming up in a couple weeks uh two saturdays let me uh while we're waiting here let me go over a couple things actually i uh um, that date for that i i, I discorded you uh is the 11th may 11th is going to be the date so if you're interested for I'll me, I'll check my schedule. For me DMing, yes, we'll create an old school character. So just let me know. That'll be a nine. It'll be a nine a.m. start. So, yeah, I got confirmation from the uh, from Bird and Coco. On that and date. that's nine a.m. EDT, right? Yeah, I know it's early. I'm sorry about that, okay. but yeah, uh, it'll be a nine a.m. game, and it'll be nine. It'll be nine to one Eastern. So you'd be done at twelve your time. So normally, like to get it so that people can enjoy their weekends, you know. So sure. get the morning games. Plus, thank you all. We're the top D&D &D stream of the morning uh, on Twitch. Thank you so very much for all the support, everyone. Really appreciate it. Um, so uh, tom just while we're waiting, tomorrow tomorrow night is going to be the topic, and I did this on a short. It's going to be playable races for your setting. It's for Greyhawk. Talk. We can talk. Uh, I, I, I'm okay if we talk 5e uh, races. So, Will, if you're free, I don't know if you're free tomorrow night. If you want to come on Gabin and talk 5e Greyhawk races, you're more than welcome to. Oh, cool. All yeah. right, it's, it's down in me, um, you know, so I know it'll be a topic right up your alley. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Sounds good. I'll add you to the banner. Very cool. Uh, next Saturday. So we're waiting here. Back to Battletech. I got eight players. <laughs> including Chris Herrera from GaryCom. Jimmy Duffy, Phantom NJ, Balfron, Tim and his son and my son in person. We're going to have a fun time. It's going to be a good game. Jimmy's far taller than I thought. Yeah, Jimmy's far taller. He's just as bald, <laughs> though. Just kidding, yeah. Jimmy, if you're there. I'm joking. Everybody's the same height when they're sitting down. <laughs> right? That's so true. That was the thing well, that one that's of the good. things that surprised me the most is when I was meeting people, it's like their height. I was like, well, it's like taller or shorter. Nobody was right at the height. That's exactly how I thought you would be. <laughs> then the week after, on the 27th, Curtis is going to be GMing his Champions superhero game with myself and Brett and Coco and Bird playing in the game. Nice. Yeah. So that'll finish out the special content for the most part on Saturday, on the Saturdays, with the exception of Keith Baker is on uh, the day after that on the 28th on Gavin. We'll talk about his Glim board game I played at Gary Con and, uh, you know, his wonderful Ebron setting. So, I don't have any other content going on. The big, big, big event is May 18th, which is the Slav Squat Squad two drink minimum <laughs> wedding event. Huh. Wedding. Crossover. Confirmed. Ed Greenwood, Eric Mona, Bones. Darling, Myriad, Tony Winslow, Brill, Eric Mangi. What a game that's going to be. So you were able to, to pin everybody down there. Everyone but Eric Boyd so far. Nice. So Josh is on standby. Josh is, yeah, for Carl Spackler to leave his character. That'll be, that's a night game. Yeah. Week after that, Bones is DMing, uh, and that'll be a night game as well. 
just with the way schedule works in May. So, like I said, I'm really I'm stacking it out now. The wedding's going to be awesome, Curtis. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, whoop, sorry. I just dropped something out of my mouth. Curtis will, will be making a cameo in the wedding. That's all I'll say. You can put two and two together, everyone. Cheese packets. Diet. So, Ashley, what are, you, what are your thoughts so far? On the game? Yeah, with, yeah the whole... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm having a good time. I'm good, smiling. Good to hear. <laughs> let me know if I cross the line with Luciano getting a little, uh, you know, active. Not yet. As, you know, <laughs> as long as it's all fade to black stuff and there's no... That, there we go. That works. That's it. No detailed descriptions. <laughs> exactly. PG, please. PG. <laughs> Well, PG thirteen. PG thirteen. Have you ever heard the games when Darling and Bones and and and, um, and right? Bird are all on here? Oh my God! Yeah. And Ed? To, oh my God! That's that's the line I'm trying not to cross. Yeah, I I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> those are those are D and D after hours. <laughs> yeah. <Blue>. After hours. <laughs> true. True. All right, I think we're good to go. Yeah. I'm eating something. That's all right. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm munching on just some. I was just responding back nuts. to X. X Door was like, "Where's your hand drawn maps?" I'm like, "Well, none today." <laughs> there's okay. there's no hand drawn maps, but there's the maps in the in the in the Willow Isle yeah. book. So yeah, and we also got the Rushmores. So just so you know, if you came late, we're here. We were down here in the Rushmore's where Willow Isle is, and we're moving up, I'm saying, up in this area somewhere up here, correct? Basically, yeah. Uh, there you go. We had a demon bird, and all Jay had to do was kill it when we were holding it down, but nope. Uh, it's my fault. <laughs> so I, I missed it, one time today. It wasn't just you. It wasn't. Uh, we who, who all else did. missed? Somebody else attacked and missed. Yeah. It was, was it Luciano? Luciano? Oh, Philip? Nah, I hit with both rocks. Okay. Both rocks. Okay. So, yeah. And then it made its saving throw against the uh, the moonbeam. So, you know, it was destined to escape it's and terrorize the Rushmores. Everyone tells all, me how much it's my all fault. In all, accordance, the time. all in accordance with the spirits. Yeah. yeah. He wants a challenge. He wants me to be challenged. It's okay. So, not long after you guys have chased off the demonic bird mother, um, Things tend to go back to, to normal, and uh, Boa lets you know through the sensations that you're okay from it, at least. You do tend to notice that Boa doesn't really notify you if said danger is a natural occurring danger within the swamp. You should be able to, that's, you know, defender of uh, of the fittest, you know, if you, if you can't defend yourself, it's your job. That's right, so. So you travel on again for several hours after this, following the map that was made off of the stone little tablet. That Did any of us get hurt? Had. No, we I don't think anybody got hit. No one's got I hit tried. The entire adventure. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. I'm sure that's going to change here soon. It's my fault. So anyway, <laughs> um, so. You're looking at because basically they made a rubbing of the time and you guys have a, a a piece of paper of this and you notice that and it, you probably would have noticed this before too at um the inn when they showed you uh it has something written on it at the bottom and it is something old you don't really recognize the the writing definitely philip doesn't unfortunately fan does not and definitely jim has no clue as to what it is <clears throat> but old loot loot you might mm. be able to decipher this so good basically time. what we're gonna look at here i think history would be a good one so basically <clears throat> of uh an if he doesn't daphne probably knows <clears throat> No, oh, does Daphne have uh, that? Uh... History. Just kidding. No, I was like, I, who knows? I wrote it up, and I, uh, of course, forget right after I write it up. So I was like, well, I could have put it. Oh, yeah, four... Daphne's got comprehend languages right Luke, there. You got four yeah. regulars. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, so Fen go ahead and four, is, three, me three. you're trained in history, correct? Let's see. I want to make sure. Yes. You had a plus five on it. I mean, plus three. Plus three. Yeah. Okay. So, so, and do you want to spend any of your points? Uh, yeah, let's use two of them. Okay. Got it. Okay. So that's an 18 on the roll. Oh, you know so exactly that's already, what it says. Yeah. So but obviously you uh, have uh, come across and been actually taught some of old Urflan. And basically it says, Urflan. under the heel of. And it's kind of whatever whatever the, the, the stone was, the writing for the, the last word, you can't make it out. But it's under the heel of H -E -E giant stomp. Yeah, like no, under well, hmm. like the heel of your foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah under giant stomp, correct. <laughs> okay. So, but you can't can't make out what the last word is under the heel of, like. So, hmm. okay. well, let's get Daphne to take a look. She's got real good eyesight. What's that say? I can't read that. I swear. I was too busy chasing away all those birds from you. You didn't even see that once, did you? I nice saved ball, you from you a did crow good. and a sparrow. You did good for once. Good oh, job. Thanks. What do you mean once? <laughs> Love, hate, okay. relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, you you travel, uh, like I say, for a couple of hours uh, more. We'll say about maybe three to four more hours. You want me to make another uh, heat exhaustion roll? Uh, yes. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> I'll have you make one more because you were fighting. I'll burn another. I'll burn. I'm down to one regular. I'll burn two more on this. Uh, a ten, with, but then a. Uh, that hits it right on the nose. Yeah. With okay, okay. So you're good. You're good. Okay. You're able. Somebody. Uh, somebody uh, got a cool rag and put it on the back of your neck. For you. So. Okay. So. Uh, cool. At the end of this uh, four hours of traveling after the encounter with Mother, in the distance you see rising up through the thick, thick haze, you know, because it starts off as nothing more than like a big old block of some kind of blotch. And it gets clearer as you get closer and the haze thins out. And it's sort of like a hill, but it has a flat top to it. And it is risen out of the swamp's muck enough that you can land said canoes and proceed on foot and actually get into some dry, solid uh, ground towards the base of... And it looks very... It is definitely man-made. Okay, Isn't that what because the Tomb of Horrors looks like? The what? Yeah. Tomb of Horrors looks like a flat thing that sticks up out of the... Yeah. Yeah. And it's circular. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like if you were to take a huge <clears throat> giant bottle cap and you set it down. Right. Okay. Like the base of a tower? I don't know. So, mm -hmm. um, foundation. Vectors and so tower? you get a feeling as well, again, from Old Boa, that this is a bad place. Big Jim, perhaps your place. Big Jim, perhaps your cousin should stay with the canoes. He should, but he's probably won't. I would recommend. I would recommend he stay with the canoes. Someone needs to stay with the canoes. We can't. If we lose the canoes, then we're not getting out of here. So someone needs to stay with the canoes. Speak for you yourself. You know, I, I, I think that. <laughs> I, I, my representatives can stay with the canoes. Fine. I'm not going to argue because they've been useless as it is. So right. So let's they just... were fighting birds, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll give you birds. the bird. I'll uh, tell you. Yeah, birds. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so, uh, you guys start like. Going up towards this hill, man-made thing. Okay. Uh, Fen, you can. Nobody else really sees it, but you definitely can see that this is. There is a path 
Has anybody ever seen uh, Romancing the Stone? Yes. And it, there's the part where he's hacking through the jungle with the machete. And he's like, well, at least there's a path through here. <laughs> you know? Right. It's, it's, like, overgrown. Yeah. it's like, this is a path? So you can tell. And it leads up to a particular spot. Okay. Okay. And uh, basically what it leads up to is... It stands this building, so like the the top of it is probably a good, I want to say at least fifteen feet tall. It is overgrown with all kinds of vegetation, moss and and uh, fungus and, and and vines and what have you. But where it leads you to, it appears as if that vegetation has been pulled away and as you were moving up the slope then you notice for one this was the trail but also somebody had been through here and cleared the trail at one point not that long ago but long enough months a couple of months right that there has been sufficient overgrowth for the untrained eye not really to notice it so much okay um and it's obvious that this particular, there's a, a bunch of foliage that has been cleared out. And what it has revealed is a very large stone door. In the center of the stone door is a triangle. Looks like just the right size for a, like a, a plate or a stone uh, tile to be placed within mm. it. And... Wait. We have a square one, right? Not a triangular one. There's a square one on the door. And <laughs> it looks oh. like the right size. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see here. Let me see what it says. Uh, um, All right. We'll wait here. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> what? I, what? You think I should put that in there? Okay, at this yep. point in time, you were feeling also now, Philip. You had old Boa giving you the sensations right as you were coming up, and then they started winking out like her connection to you was lessening to the point. This is very unnatural. By the time you get up hours there, of work, you cannot feel the presence of old Boa telling you, Hey, behave, or Hey, there's some uh. There's some danger there. <laughs> so that must mean there's no danger now. Exactly. It's gone away. And, mm. uh, okay. That's, okay, here it is. I should have highlighted it. So, written in old flan, it says, beneath where that tile is, where can you find Galith Olane? Which is an elven name. And I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I even okay. phonetically spelled it. Galatholian. Galatholian? Galatholian. <clears throat> and it says, where can you find Galatholian? Is what it says on the door. Well, okay. No, so so uh, you can do, go ahead and uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Give me a history check. Uh, loot. That's Vampire Thrommel's name in Elvish. It's yep. not funny, Tim. That's going to be a re-roll. I got a one. Okay. That's going to be an 11 on the roll. So that's going to be 14. Is that what I said? Plus three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 14. But obviously you're trained in uh, the uh, ancient uh, Earthland, but uh, let's see. You know, it's there's something about this name. You know, it has oh, something plus, to sorry, do with fifteen. My bad. Fifteen. It has something to do with ancient elven <laughs> fortresses in the mountains, uh, way back in the day. Yeah, the fortress, the the wall of fortresses and the crystal mists and Lort Mills and all that. I mean, not the Lort Mills, but the barrier peaks and. See, it has something. That name is somehow connected with those. You think even you you not uh, you think it maybe belonged to an old elven king at some point. Perfect. Um, I only share this with the halflings. 
Okay. And I'll share it with Kate. You're, you're gonna say you're gonna say it in uh, Hobbins. Yeah. The halfling talk. I, was like, I don't understand that. So. <laughs> I uh, thought this uh, was all like a Vecna uh, complex. Why? Why is there an old elven burial thing here, or tower? That or... cat person doesn't know. I. All I know is something's interfering with the spiritual connection to this world. I'm thinking it has to do with this thing here. So I should put this plate in here like this, and he starts walking up there. Sure, what right. could go wrong? Have sure. a nice day. So he puts it in, <laughs> shagunk, and then it, it like sucks it in immediately. And then he takes a couple of steps back and he goes, all right, do something. And like in answer to that, the vegetation on the <laughs> side of the mound shakes and some sort of huge, massive vegetation like shambling mound monstrosity detaches itself from it, and it's massive, it's like a big, hulking thing. And it stops and it turns and it's looking down at Cade, and it says in a language that only, um, loot. Loot can understand that that phrase that was on the door. Where can you find Galatholian? Well, tell him the answer. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what this is. <laughs> uh, Kate, I just have a an off question for you. Now that we're in this predicament, would you happen to know where? Uh, just asking for personal reasons, uh, where uh, Galatholian might be found. Is that what's written on that tile? Oh, no, I was just, I just wanted to find out. I'm curious. You know, I'm all about history and research and, you know, communication. Well, don't forget, what did, what did it say on the tile? The hill. Where Galatholian is buried. No, no, no. That's on the tile. Oh, the tile itself. Um, Where can you find Galatholian? And on the tile, it said, under the heel of. Put on, mm. say Vecna. Under the heel of Vecna. Go for it. Say it under the heel of Acna. Say it. Okay. You say, and how do you say it? In in the old tongue. In old uh, in Earthland. Okay. Yeah. You say in Earthland under the heel of Vecna, and it turns and it merges back into the vegetation on the side of the thing, and the door. Well done, Kate. I don't know what you said, but apparently that worked. Well, son, I said open the door is what I said. <laughs> Your powers are just <laughs> unsurmountable. I don't understand. It's amazing. I know. Should I go? No. no. Maybe yeah, it's best yeah, if, yeah, if I should. wait outside. Oh. No. So far, we haven't found any trace of my friend. With a <laughs> powerful <laughs> wizard <laughs> such as you? At oh, I'm no wizard. Please, I'm no wizard please. All well, right. Obviously, well, you know what you're doing since you yeah, um, oh, excuse me, took care sorcerer. of that shambling mound so well. Well, thank you. You, you flatter me. You do. But uh, perhaps a mighty warrior such as Big Jim should go first. I don't. Sure, I'll go first. Excellent. Okay. So basically, it opens, and this is all rough cut stone. Okay. Directly on the opposite side of the doorway is a set of stairs that go down to a small landing. It goes down maybe about 10 feet. Okay. Then there's another, you can see, another set of stairs going off of that further down in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead on it. Somebody going to, now nope. you guys have I want to find traps. dark vision, but you can't see in complete darkness and there's no light in there. Okay. Well, someone have a torch to light. Yeah, because you all have uh, standard adventuring packs. So all right. Everybody's Order, do, do I have a lantern? Sure. I'll say you have a lantern instead. D let's have, I think, who would be the best at ha holding it? Loot? Well, I, I can do that. All right. There you go. You can you can do it. At least and you can hold he, it high enough. Yeah. And he, he intends to stand at the back. That's fine. So, 
Um, Fen can also uh, take out one. She'll take out her her moon scimitar, and then in her yes. other hand, she will do produce flame and just there you go. Hold it. Nice. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Both will emit light, and you can throw the fire whenever you want. I'm yes. going to uh, telepathically communicate with Daphne and tell okay. her to to keep an eye on that guy. So whenever we are, just make sure, watch what he's doing and uh, give me a little scratch on the back if he starts doing something very suspicious. Can I just sting him? Hmm. Yeah, if it looks like he's doing something offensive or running away, yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> offensive to us. Ah. Well, Come okay. on. You're now... smart, Daphne. Don't. <laughs> All right. I won't kill him. Don't kill him unless he needs it. Don't All kill right, him. I Let's not I kill won't. anyone that's alive, living. Okay. Well, he's doing this telepathically, so. Okay. Okay. No, actually, you well, just I'm get gonna... that vibe and you just say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, Look I'm going to uh, saying it all. <laughs> pull out a vial that I have that has a uh, eyelash encased in gum Arabic, and say a few words and touch Big Jim and touch Fenne. Uh, Excellent. Uh, uh, how are we touching them? <laughs> Do I In a good way. No the bad touch. No the bad touch. Wait, wait, okay. the, the egg green would touch. <laughs> okay, that's good. Gentle, that's good. gentle stroke of the arm. Yes. <laughs> Just enough to let you know I'm there. Hello. Is anybody <laughs> injured? No. No, no. What, is that, what does that again. do there, Loot? You what notice that uh, Jim and Fenna are now <laughs> invisible. Oh. Oh. Excellent. It's hard to coordinate that between us both being invisible, but that's awesome. Thank you. So she just has her flame just out in the air, or is it her flame invisible now, too? I think everything would be, right? Oh, that's a good call. Anything the, the that target would... is wearing or carrying is invisible, as long as it's on their person. So she has it in her hand, so yeah. Yeah, how and... are my light sources? I, was, I would think the light that would be exuded from it would become visible, then. Don't start that argument. The source. Yeah, I think that's, that's okay. <laughs> that's how Frank and Len bigger. ended their relationship. <laughs> Talking about magical light and how it goes through a wall. Is that really true? Yeah. That's I, what Frank said. Yeah. Frank, Frank Mentor and Lenga Kafka got into a fight over over that. magical light I don't versus doubt, I don't doubt that for a second. Wow. Wow. Man. That sounds about right. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're both completely pig-headed, and you know. Yeah. And, and I'm going to rule in this world that once the light leaves the source, it is no longer a part of the source, and thusly becomes visible. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. So you go down the stairs, or you wait for somebody to to uh, try and detect a trap. You can look for yourself as well. I mean, all you need is an investigation roll. You might not be skilled at it, but you might be able to notice something. Uh, all of us, sir. Any of you can really. It's an intelligence check, so I don't think any of you are going to be uh, trained in investigation. So it would be just whatever your intelligence plus zero. It's a lot of hero points you could use too. I'll just roll in. I roll a fourteen. Fourteen's not bad. What'd you I get? rolled That's a right. nineteen, so I got a nice. twenty. Nice. Nice. So you, I assume, hear this voice just come out of nowhere. It looks good to me. <laughs> you, you guys, do not see anything <clears throat> um, bad on the um, on the stairs going down or on the landing. I'm assuming that you're going to continue to check as you go through. Okay. So anytime that you want to uh, make a specific rule, just state. Otherwise, I'm going to assume you're going off your passives. Okay. So your passive investigation. Who has the highest intelligence bonus here? Not me. Okay, Not there's me. a zero. <laughs> zero, zero. How's Fen okay. doing? You got a one? It's okay. Fen. Got a one as well. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. So both Luciano and Fen have plus ones, basically meaning that your passive is 11. Okay. Which is great to know. So just ask me specifically if there's any area that you want to specifically investigate, and then we'll make Adam do the role. Okay. So you go down, you go down to the uh, to the landing and to the other stairs. Sure. Jim? Okay, I'm doing absolutely. so stealthily, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to slow uh, my movement. I'm invisible, so I'm going to take my time and and say to everyone, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to go down at normal rate, um, you know, because they can still hear me. So 
Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead and Luciano, uh, make that stealth roll for me. That's a nat 20. Excellent. Shh. Anybody else want to remain stealthy? I mean, you can't stealth the light, but you can stealth. I the can't noise. stealth in my armor, so you can. It would be disadvantage on the roll. Yeah, I'm not doing and it. you're not, and you're not trained. Okay, fair no. enough. You'll probably fail anyway. Is he, <laughs> are, is he walking in front of us or, or, or... I'm in front? You, okay. When he was turned invisible, he was in front of you, and you hear the ching, ching, ching. Is it possible for me to put my staff just kind of rested on his backpack just so that I can kind of have a feel for where he's at so I don't put an Eldritch Blast through him by accident? You could. Are you going to talk to him and coordinate that before you yeah, go? Yeah, I'll be like, hey, okay. I'm just going to rest this here so I see where you're at so I don't accidentally Fair enough. Blast. If you see me move off of it fast, there's a reason for it. Right, right, right. Okay. You guys go down. And it, it there's a, 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 a cave chamber. Mm -hmm. It's not extremely large. You're looking at maybe something that's about 30 feet long, 20 feet wide. There's two um, two chambers going off to the right and to the left. Okay? <coughs> okay. It is carved out of stone. Okay? You know that this stone is not part of the swamp. It's almost as if this thing that you walked into was brought there. This huge disc of stone. <coughs> okay. Yeah. The um the floor before you go down the final uh stairs onto this chamber, you notice that the floor has a shadow that kind of ripples. Uh -oh. to it so like if water were shadow they just kind of like on the floor on the walls in here are paintings that are cracked and aged and and weathered really bad but you can see some of the images of different things of what luciano you can detect and pick out those are obviously depictions of earthland and earthland um wizards and they're doing bad things to elves Crazy. like i did yes it's you <laughs> <laughs> bad things <laughs> uh, that's funny so so you can step down into said shadow if you wish or because you'll have to to go to the right or to the left hmm. well that's a weird that's a weird uh, phasing on the floor maybe let's... the professor should take a look at the shadow no no no, no. Let's, let's keep him that out of shadow <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll go forward and then look down, look into the right. Uh, okay. Are there any loose rocks or anything around? Yeah, that yeah. There's quite, a, there's quite a bit of loose stuff because, like, plaster and chunks has fallen off the walls and stuff. At one time, even this stairwell that you kind of came down, the the stone in here was plastered at one point, and chunks of that plaster has fallen off, revealing the stone beneath. Is there any? Are any of them good enough for Luciano to replenish his stones since he? Uh... You roll a 20 and let me know if you get over 15. 16. Oh, there's one rock in there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to end up in a Tim game where I have no ammo left. So. Right? I hear you. <laughs> uh, you. Do you think we should um, maybe throw some a rock or something at that shadow and see? That was going to be the next step. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah you've sure. got, got plenty of stuff you could toss in there. Like a so, uh, torch or your rope. Audibly, whatever. we can tell where Fen and uh, Big Jim are, right? Based on yeah, where you they... can hear him like a, a ahead of you. He's at the head of. I... He's at the end of my staff. <laughs> right. So this is the marching order. Targeting as I range. Right? Anticipate it. So we have Jim, we've got Philip, we've got Fen, we've got uh, Luciano, and then bringing up the rear is Kate, the professor. Oh, oh I don't like that. Feet. We're in single file. <laughs> Going down the stairs, yeah. Okay. You could, if you wanted to, do two abreast. But there you go. 
Uh, somebody, somebody go throw something into the shadow? Luciano calls Cade up to the front of the line. Says, uh, Cade, do me a favor. Take a close look at this pool down below me. I should I'll just blast him and push him in there. I don't see no pool. I see darkness. Lots of darkness. And that's when I throw the stone between his legs into the pool. Okay. And it goes and it hits. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the shadow, when it hits... It poofs up like smoke, but it leaves like, you know how like uh, if you were to drop something and it's very shallow, it'll clear an area before the liquid or whatever mm-hmm. comes back in. You can see the floor beneath it for a split second before it closes back in, but then the smoke just kind of goes and it goes and it rests back down along the floor. Okay. Nothing to see here. Time to go. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing to worry about at all. Huh. Look safe, Cade. I guess you should proceed forward. Well, I will as soon as uh, the, the mighty warrior down there moves forward into the, the room. Make sure it's safe. Uh, he'll move, move, but he's just going to prod a little bit with his sword just because he just wants to make, you know. Okay, so you, you prod into the Just into a little bit, just to make sure it, it yeah. doesn't drop off into, yeah. Totally do so. You move into the room. It's, it's, it's solid. It's fine. When you step down the shadow poofs out from around your foot and then kind of like just coalesces back around you and just like it's like a nice fine mist around on the floor it's only a couple of inches it it doesn't uh it, it seems heavy it seems to stay at the floor doesn't come i'm up. gonna use i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, do my divine sense here mm-hmm. presence of strong evil registers on your senses like noxious odor and powerful good rings like heavenly music in your ears i'm gonna do that and it's it, it and it senses what again? Celestial. Uh, so uh, celestial fiend undead within sixty feet of you is not behind. Uh, yeah, behind total cover. No. You know the type yeah. and of any whose presence you sense, but it is not, but not its identity. Nothing. Nothing chimes. Okay. I'm. I, I'm gonna test it with. Uh, okay. Hey, I can do something up to sixty feet away. How big is the room? Uh, this is totally within it. It's a 30 by 20. Okay, so, you know, 15 feet in the room, I'll do produce, uh, create bonfire. Okay. And see you, if the flames interact with the shadowy stuff. If the flames push it up, push it away for like about a foot around it, but then that's it. It's sort of like almost as if it burns it off. Right. Does it burn it all off? No. Just when it encroaches. So like if it, it keeps it at that bay because okay. anything, you know. It looks like the damn death servant from the Ten Commandments. Yeah, it lasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The angel of death. <laughs> angel of death. So, looking, you can see there's there's another chamber over to the right there. Okay, and right. that one is it looks about similar, in in size. The the passage going to the left curves and goes south. All right, so there was nothing. We saw nothing in any either of the two rooms, the main room and the side room uh, to the right. Uh, to but we haven't checked the other one. So okay, yeah, well, you let's... you can look into the to the to the room that is to the right. That's another one. It's about twenty by thirty. You see more paintings on the walls, but you don't see much else besides mm-hmm. the um, shadow on the floor. And no differences in the depictions. No, it's just more. Uh, elves being treated poorly hey daphne you're real smart and you have really good eyes how about doing a a, a one's one flight around the room looking at the wall see if there's any little weird little cracks that we can't see because your sight is so awesome you think i'm gonna buy that i'm gonna fly around one of these corners and something gonna reach out and grab don't go around the corner no just this room not around the corner no not around the corner i don't want you Where? To... down this way right this room just look and see if there's a secret there's door. i'm right here i can see the whole room it's fine there's nothing here all right, <laughs> let's go. To, let's go that the last way then, or where it curves around. Okay, You're disappointing, Daphne. <laughs> you look around and you go and you look down the hall, which she flies up there real quick, right there. It goes, oh, I see, it, and then comes right back. So that basically at the same time you get there. See, I love. I just wanted um, you to check the walls of this room, you silly git. So let's see here. A 40-foot hallway. Wow. Okay. 
stretches before you. On the left side of the hallway are three indentations, like mm -hmm. a doorway. Mm -hmm. On the right are two indentations. For like doorway. alcoves. Sort of. Yeah. It is the alcove that which in which a door might set. Right, right. On the left side, you can see a bar. So, like, there's bars in these alcoves. And on the right side, about halfway down, there's two doors, and it looks like there's a bronze door. The the shadow covers the floor in here as well. So you're saying that the, the left side, there are bars blocking the alcove opening? Correct. Like they're like, they're, the, like, like they're the little mini prisons. Well, that you don't know what's on the other side of it, but you can go up and look. Yeah, well, we'll start looking. The, 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 go someone... to the first alcove? Yeah, why not? Okay. You go over to the first alcove, and essentially what it is is that these three indentations lead into the same area, which is another hallway with three indentations directly across cross from the bars so there's a indentation with a bar instead bar wow. instead of a door on the opposite side of it is a statue got it each holds a stone encrusted uh statues of uh hold on a second here where's it at uh, okay there are statues of earthland warriors each holds a stone a stone encrusted club in their right hand and their palm in their left hand lays out and open. Okay. Each one has make sure a bronze key in their hand. The open palm. All right, and there's a bronze door on the other side. Yes. The bronze there's door. There's two bronze doors which have three keyholes. Key How many they have three keyholes? No, they have one key. And there's three keys, but there's two bronze doors. Correct. So there's an extra key. Hmm. Are the bars, is there, is there a locking mechanism for the bars? No. It, well, yes and no. It is a bronze barred gate. So uh, think right. of an Old West jail cell. Yeah, got it. And how it's got a turn so that you can open, you know, you turn, it undoes the lock, and you can just open up the bars. Right? It has that. So essentially there would be like another lock that would be put on that to keep it from opening. Are, and are, are they, well, all right, someone needs they to They have no on. locks on them. Okay. I have a feeling these are all going to animate everyone, but we could be wrong. I don't, yeah, I don't like it. You don't like anything, Philip. And on deeper investigation, there's no difference between any of these three. I don't think that can sour. So, Are these jail cells empty? Can and we can see besides side? Besides the statues, they are. Let's do something stupid. Let's have three people in, in front of each, and we open the doors all at the same time. We take all three keys. Why not? I like it. I think Cade likes this idea. Okay, Ooh. so who's going to take what key? I'll do the farthest <laughs> one down the hall. I'll do the middle one. Okay, you're going to do the middle one. Hold Boa on. will I'll go up the that. middle, head first into the mouth of the spirit. Okay, so you're going to do the middle one. I'll do the farthest one down the hall. Okay, so Jim's down here. And who's doing the closest one? I can, I'll do it. Yes. I'll do it. Okay. Two, two of them are invisible <laughs> still, so. Right. Yeah, no offense. Okay. And so somebody's going to count off and then boop, boop, boop. Yeah, we'll have it. we'll have loot count off since he's coordinating it. Okay. Okay. You go one, two, three. I take it everybody snatches, right? Sure. Sure. Okay. So we'll go in order from Jim up. So Jim, uh, you grab the key, mm -hmm. and uh, you take. 
13 points of electrical damage. Oof. As oh. electricity is shot through the statue into you, but you're holding the key. Smoking a little bit. All right, no problem. Okay. Zoinks. The middle statue. We'll come back to that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's go up to the first one. Okay. Uh, okay, I need a wisdom save, then. All right. All right. How it's bad a- could it be? DC 14. Don't forget, you've got stuff to spend. I would like to re-roll that. <laughs> I will let you re-roll it Ed, so you can spend your stuff. All right, you're down to two. Yep. Oh, man. It's better, but not by a lot. Um, yeah, that would be a 10. Uh-oh. You were filled with an unexplainable rage against your companions. Nice! So pick the first one you want to try and kill. (laughs) (laughs) Starting the Anish next (laughs) round, that will be rolled. (laughs) That's awesome. So now we're going to go to the middle one. Okay. So with the middle one, we have our man, Philip, snatches the key and is like, and nothing happens for a second. You're all like, "Ah, see, nothing. And then he just goes, and that one animates. Okay. So I was expecting a, this. <laughs> it's initiative time, everybody. This is the and, only thing I was expecting. And let's get this right. Fen is invisible and can attack us. Correct. Well, but after I attack, I should be visible. <laughs> yes, but luckily, after. but luckily, <laughs> Cade is part of the party, and I'm pretty sure she'll want to attack him. No, of course not. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. He was bringing up the rear. He yeah. does have that cool force field. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he'll activate it. DM's force field okay. on injustice. There you go. Okay, go ahead and roll your initiatives, everybody. This seems like a pretty important one. Yeah. Yeah, it All is. right. Because Seven... everything got activated at once. <laughs> 17 plus 2, 19. Now I get That's the nat 20. Oh! <laughs> I'm re-rolling. I got a 1 on the first one. It's a 21. Okay. Oh, it's so much better. I got a two on the second one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? I thought I was going to be last. I got a five, but plus two. Five, seven. okay. Seven okay. total. Man. That statue's real slow because it's so bulky. It is. It is really slow, but fortunately it goes right in the middle before you guys and after uh, the 19 and 20. Okay. Statue's slow, but Fen is fast. That's right. Fen, you are first up. Who are you going to attack? Or would you like me to roll it randomly for you? Who is the closest to me? Well, uh, that's probably, unfortunately, it, it, no, well, it would be Loot or Cade. And I do think I said Cade is following up in the back, so that would put Loot in front of Cade. So All right, next I will, you, right next to you is Loot. I had to um, free up a hand to grab the key, so I think I would have um, dropped the flame spell um to grab the key so i'm still holding my sickle. Um, moon sickle and i'm gonna swipe oh, at him. <laughs> this will be the second time you get to character killed by another player character yeah <laughs> so so Luke, go ahead and and roll with advantage a uh um uh wisdom check yeah, or insight if you using... have insight is that on your character sheet let's that see uh don't think no so. you do not so you add your wisdom so it's a plus one so, but it is at advantage, so you get to roll two. It's a 12 on one and a two on the other. Okay. You just so that's going to be a 13 and three. I will say with the 12, you there's something wrong with, you notice that there's something wrong. She becomes visible. Yeah. She's not in her right mind, obviously. Ah, okay. All right. What did you roll to attack there, Fen? My moon sickle. Yeah, here it comes. Do it. <laughs> 19. Oh, <laughs> oh. All you hear from behind loot is, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll the damage. I'm sure that hits. <sighs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, okay, 1d4. Okay. Six damage. 
shop. Okay. See, that wasn't too bad. And I become visible. Yes. Oh, that's true. He wouldn't even notice until after the attack had happened. And then and her rage is now off, off finally. Whew, thank you. Ah, I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, so now Jim. So Jim, I, I, I'm in the other side, right? So I got to advance toward the... the you can, it's all connected. Okay. So essentially, so essentially, just imagine that there's two parallel uh, uh, hallways. Those bars lead into another hallway where the right. statues are. So I'll have my weapon out, but I'm not going to swing this round. I'm going to lay hands 13 of the 15 points I have to put myself back up to total. I'm nice. down to 15 as I go, and I'll get close enough so that if uh, he gets a, uh, our favorite, uh, uh, more like it's a tactic, I can intercept it at least. Gotcha. All right. Okay. All right. So, it's the uh, statue's turn. Let's go and find him. Parlay. <laughs> Parlay, right. Okay. okay. Look in the mirror. All right. So, let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that, 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 that's not bad. Oh, this is going to hurt. Miss. Okay, so 21 hits. It's going to do... Oh, shit. Yeah, let's see here. Oh, that's not too bad. It's only 2d6. Relax. Okay, and you take six points of damage. I intercept it. Excellent. Seven reduced. Okay. Okay, so it's reduced to zero then. It's very nice. lawful good of you. It's like a movie. <laughs> very lawful good. Ding. Yeah. Right? Okay, cool. All right, well, that kind of sucks. Now it's it's your turn, Phil. Good. I want to... How far... Oh, How much space is behind this thing to the wall to, uh, to end it? Um, not very much space at all. If you were to push it back, it's not going to take it away from being able to attack you. It was essentially in an alcove. So it just it you stepped up to it. You're in the hallway, and it's in an alcove. So it it hasn't even moved. It just swung at you with its. I know. Skull. I got like one. I can I can do basically one more spell. You could run away. It would only get an attack up opportunity on you. You know, probably miss. just stay here and fight it. Uh, I'm gonna give it. I'll do an eldritch blast on it. Yeah. Okay. Let's take. We gotta get the, this this down. So here's some other commotion going on in the other. It's it's tough. So <laughs> you you'll uh, need like the power of all your friends. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink, um, hint, hint. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So when I roll when I rolled when I rolled to hit, I got to do like a ranged attack. Yeah, you're gonna roll and add five. So roll d twenty. Oh, five. okay, a dirty twenty. Okay, that's a hit. All right, and an eldritch blast does one die ten. Mm-hmm. And I will I will shove it back. Okay. Boom. It hits the wall. So if if uh Hey, I rolled a one. I get to re-roll that because I'm lucky, right? Not on damage. Sorry. That's a nice try. So you really rolled a one? I did. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was like so impressed by that shield uh, display. I like got didn't. I was. Focus. You were kind of you didn't expect it out of Jim. It's like, wow, Jim, he really is a whoa. good guy. <laughs> oh shoot. Okay, so loot. You just got sickled, man. What the hell? Well, not knowing where this attack is coming from, Lute is drawing his blade and turning to she, yeah, she's, yeah. battle whoever this is behind him. As he should. <laughs> okay. Wide-eyed in shock as he sees who it is. What are you going to do? She's obviously a plant. She was oh. placed... You know she's not from the village. Oh, wait, neither are you. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to... Uh... <clears throat> if he has time to do this, cast hold person. Oh, excellent. You do. It's a one action, correct? Hold person, correct. I do believe. All right, then you can. Sorry. So man. what type of uh, saving throw? Uh, let's see. Target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed. Okay, DC 13 for you there, Ben. Is she going to make it? Yeah, <laughs> she one. made it. Do you not what? Actually, well, I have to. I you have to reroll. I yeah. have to reroll because no, because lucky. lucky. 
Lucky means she doesn't re-roll because what's lucky for her for real as a hobbit would be to be held. You know, that makes a lot of sense. And it makes so much sense. We're going to have a DM's challenge. Roll a <laughs> D20 and tell you what you get. You just got to beat me. Oh, you ain't beating us. I got 18. You talking about me? Yeah, yeah roll, roll it. 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 I, 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 it's I a DM's showdown. Yeah. I rolled a four. Yeah, okay. Well, so, it, was worth, no. it was worth a try. No, you, you're <laughs> held. <laughs> but the good thing is, is now I want you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. it, may, it may break the it may break it. Make this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the important uh -oh. one. <laughs> okay. You still want to kill him. <laughs> so how long is she held for? It's concentration, right? Oh. Hold on, but, so she'll have to make a save at the end of each turn. Okay. All right. And it stays for as long as you have. Concentration should be at least a minute, I would think. So the entire combat. Okay. All right, good. So we've got a combat of uh, of uh, mental combat going on over there, so to speak. You could still attack her though while she's held if you wanted to, because you didn't, you know, take her out of the game. Oh. No, he's just very confused, and <laughs> he just took it as payback for treating women as he did the night before. So. You know, there you go. <laughs> okay, so top of the uh, top of the order, Ben. Man, there you go. Look how this works. Get to save already. Oh no! Wait, you. We started with you. It's Jim. It's your turn, Jim. Sorry. Oh, it's me. Yeah, it's your turn. Uh, I guess I'm gonna swing at this uh, thing. Kill this uh, thing. You just gave us a hint, hint, and uh, so I can divine smite it. Still, it doesn't say that. Yeah, it, it, yeah I'm gonna. It's I got bronze. Two left. It's soft metal. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it. So I need to. We need to do damage. This twenty natural. There you go. So this is <laughs> First what one. happens. You take. Whatever dice you're going to roll, mm -hmm. and you double it. Including the Divine Smite? Including the Divine Holy Smite. Holy crap. You okay. just saved somebody's bacon. Probably your own. It, All right. Do... So, d d there is a chance. You do I double? It. Like it's tied right. die 10 plus 4. Do I d do 2 die 10 plus 8 or 2 die 10 plus 4? You do not do the pluses. Two die ten. Dice. All right. 2 die 10 plus 4. All right, so that's 15 there. Now, uh, this is 10 die 8, because it's not undead. Correct. It's not 15, undead. That's 15, 20. Oh, my God. That's only 35, 36, 49. I got four more still. Holy jeez. That's a critical. 64. Thankfully, he's listening to me. I said, come on, Jim, hit it. And finally, he did. He did do it. Yeah. 64 okay. points. Holy schmoly. And that was my second. So, that was my second. Of, uh, Jim walked up. Smite. Ruff, 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 ruff. Whatever he says, the energy goes all over his blade. You slice this thing in twain, like it going through hot butter. And it just... <clears throat> Wow. Didn't see yeah. that one coming. Okay. All right. Well, it can't do anything to you because it is now dead. So we're going to go to Phil. Good job, Jim. Is he still injured? No. I got two points left on my lay on hands as well All right. for someone. Good job. See what's going on behind us. Something's up. Yeah, I, I turn around and sees her held, and <laughs> I'm looking. What 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 have I been getting from the darn wizard? Do you know Daphne's looking at that idiot dude? What's he doing? What's the look? In his, what's the look in his eye? The look in his eye is like ooh ah ooh ooh ah. He he's not attempting to do anything. He's not attempting to flee, but he's not getting involved either. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a traitor. Oh, that's rather harsh, isn't it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. All right. All right. So uh so that's it. Because that do takes want, basically do, do... a second to check in with Daphne. Yeah, because I, I might have Daphne sting her if she doesn't settle down. Makes sense. Okay. So loot. So 
taking advantage of his size and nimbleness, he runs behind Cade and taking advantage of 5e rolls, then throws a stone at one of the golems. Okay, there's only one golem. It was cut in half. It's oh. gone. Oh, it was the just, other, the, oh, just the one moved. Yeah, the other okay. statues are still standing right where they were. Uh, okay. Well, he throws a stone at the back of Cade's head then. At back of Cade's head? He's just standing there. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Gently. Oops. Okay. All right. Uh he's I mean he'll see it coming at him. He's because he's no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, what the heck? I just move behind Kate out of uh, reach of Fen for Smart. now. All right. Okay, that works. That's good stuff. That way okay. Fen can kill him. Okay. Fen. All right. Uh still held. It is uh top of the order. It goes back to you. You're still held, so you get a roll against being held. So they, you get a sitting uh -oh. through there. It was wisdom, okay. right? For that? Um, that's 19. Yeah, she's out. No longer held. Now Freedom. let's roll. <laughs> now let's roll to see if you still have the bloodless. Come on. Let's make it. Billy, Billy, this Billy, is the Billy, one you Billy, need Billy, to Billy, fail. Billy, 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 Billy. Oh, yeah, she's definitely fail this one. She's um, so that's also wisdom for the bloodlust? Yeah. She needs to fail okay. it? For me, that's what he wants. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I wouldn't mind seeing 18. Kate take a shot. Uh, 18. Whew. 18. Okay, so you make that too. So you no longer have the bloodlust and you're no longer held. Luciano looks disappointed. Yeah. Secret is I'm always angry. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do declare. Are you all right? You seemed angry. You took a swipe at him. Look, he's bleeding. Him. Luke. She looks down at the moonsicle and she thinks for a minute and then goes, <clears throat> nah, I shouldn't. <laughs> so, uh, Mar uh, Big Jim has two points left on his lay on hands. He might as well use them now and put some on, on loot. How, how much does loot have? Because I, I have my elixir of healing, but it's only going to be last until, you know, seven or eight or nine at, at night. So, uh, his two will put me up to 18 out of 22. Why? Well, why don't you save those, Jay? Why don't you save the two, and I'll give him my elixir. It's only two die four plus two. All right, sounds good. I'll I'll keep my land hands for two. All right, so I'll give you the elixir. Uh, how do you want to two die four plus two? Plus two. It, it'll put you up. To you know, I'll save it. Total. I'll save it. For well, now. It only lasts till whenever we ate right after dinner time or b bedtime. It's twenty four hours since uh, bedtime last night. It only lasts until that point. So I don't. Okay. Our day is getting kind of long. So. Yeah, that would make more sense. Don't wait too long. <laughs> hey, if he messes up, it's on him, right? You told him what to do. Yeah. So we have three yeah. keys, right? We have yeah. three keys and we have two doors. Three keys, two doors. We'll Hold essentially on. call Hold them on. key one, key two, key three. Key one was the key where when taken off, Forced Fen to attack her friends. Yo, Choller Games! Hey, hello! Oh, no, 32. Key 2 Chuck. was the key that brought the... Um, Yo, Django. The statue to life. Clearly, that's the best key. And key 3 is the one that shot... Oh, did twice. Jim. What's up, Chuck? It's so all you troll people... We're going to give away two, your choice of two of Will's great publications right here. A whole bunch of them. All right. For one winner, exclamation point joining the second winner, we're going to do uh, a Troller Games gift certificate for $10. This Troller Games is one of our best sponsors. So thank you so very much. Good to see you, Chuck, and good to see you, everyone. Hey, uh, good to see you, Heather. Uh, um, hopefully everything's going well. So please hang out, have fun, enjoy this. We probably got another 45 minutes and we're done. So, all right. This is uh, William Henry Dorax guesting on the channel, um, and we all have, we're playing Halflings, and we're playing um, a great game, uh, Lost Secrets of the Rushmores. <laughs> so, having a bunch of fun. So, okay. uh, Will, also, <clears throat> after taking that elixir, mm -hmm. uh, Luciano casts Healing Word on himself. Okay. Were you that far down? That wasn't that bad. Okay. It's one die four for that one, so. Hmm. Okay. But you so you're saving the elixir? Oh yeah. All right. Yep. At least that's a quick fix. <laughs> so that'll give me so, two points back on that. Plus uh da, 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 1d4 for each slot above first level. So 
So that's two, six, eight. Dead. So that puts you at full, though. Yep, puts me back okay. up. So key one is the change you into a uh, make you want to kill your friends. Key two, statue came alive. Key three, the shot king key. Right. Do any of the keys look different? They all look very no. similar? Yes. Okay. They're all pretty much almost exactly look the same. It's time to roll the dice. Three keys, two doors, right? Yep. Well, maybe there's maybe down the other. This hallway's got to end, right? Or is, no, there's a bronze oh, door at dead the end. end. The hallway dead ends at forty feet. I think a secret door. I think the Wait. one that the golem was protecting is probably the most important one, because that would make sense, right? So maybe that we uh, we use that one on the the furthest door down the hall. That's just a, a, a guess. On okay. That. And if, if there... no no one else wants to do it, I will do it. Well, that's uh, the no. one I had, right? I've got you on this. Oh, you're going to do Okay. Loot's oh, no, I've got you in a different way on this. I'm going to use Mage Hand. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, it, we're talking about the key I had, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want to do it that way? I was going to go do it, but... You no, let, it. let him Mage Hand it. That way, uh, if... Yeah. Yes. That way we don't get I, a surprise like I Jim see. did. Wait, I, so I, now I get... If, if you would use Mage Hand, then none of us would have gotten electrocuted or Correct. possessed. Correct. He forgot. <laughs> Hey, I'm getting Alex, some insights as to you, how Alex. his Thanks life went last it. night with that maid. <laughs> hey, darling. Okay, so you're going to use the you're going to use the uh, mage hand. You're going to take the key from the one where the the statue came alive. Correct. Put it into the keyhole. You're going to turn right or left. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> let's go left. Okay, you turn it left. Electricity shocks all through it. Okay, I'm going to turn it right. Okay, turn it right. Nothing happens. Turn no right click. Nothing. No click, no nothing. What Tim was just saying, I'm going to turn it right one more time. Nothing happens. Take it out. Okay, I'm going to turn it all the way left again. <laughs> now I'm going to turn it left again. And left again. You just want me to do that, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was worth it. Mm. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> no, way to define, no way to define which divine which one is correct. All right. Well, we still have time on the mage hand. Wait, uh, there's on that. There was electrical damage from the other key. Uh, electrical damage here. Maybe it's the third key that goes through a match. Door. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get so it. same idea. We match it up based on that. Okay, you match it up. Same thing as happened with the first key. Turn to the right, not the hands, turn to the left, it's electrical. Okay, we take each key and put each key in each lock okay. using the mage So hand. you have one, only one key left on the first door. Right. Use the key number one on that. You turn it to the right, it goes click. And it kind of like moves slightly. Uh, so you got to have both keys. You got to use both. Yeah. Okay. Which key? Which key in the second door then? Uh, or each one does d opens it partially. He said it moved a little. There's only so... two doors though. There's three keys and two doors, right? Yeah. Well, yes. the electrical one obviously does nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or it was the wrong order. Maybe. Right, Maybe so... we have we have to pull them out and then put another one in. Well, no. Turn. So you already did the one key in the first door. We know that was successful. Yeah. So the second door, it's to the right. Uh, uh, try try a key, whichever. We key try the one. other key that does not cause electrocution or didn't cause the, the golem electrocution. key. The golem key. Mm -hmm. So go for it. And then uh, turn that to the um, the other one. We turn to the left that was successful, right? So yeah. day door two. Thank you, is Modesto. The one you're doing this on? Yeah. Okay. And which key are you using? The right, key that did not twice. electrocute Jim. The golem key. The golem, the golem key. key. Okay. <clears throat> when you try the golem key on door two, it's the same thing as the electricity and nothing happening as you did with door one. Okay, so it's the door itself. Um, oh, let's use the last, the other key. I mean, yeah. it's process elimination. Yeah, three. I mean, we once have no choice get, but two at this yeah. point. Once you use the last key, 
the the key that was electrical on the third door on the second door that opens it does the same thing there's a click click and it moves slightly so so the golem that was protecting the middle key did nothing correct wow hmm. guess that's a big trap all right fair enough well they didn't open they just moved a little bit yeah how much space is there actually beneath each of these now they look like they might be able to be pushed open yeah do they have door oh. knobs or handles no they do not so so they're not probably in the same room so let's put let's put the party two and two on each in front yes, of the store. Yes, let's come on, let's go for it. We're, we've, we've let's push okay. our luck. Uh, we'll put Fen and me on on the, the far one, and we'll put uh, we'll put we'll put the other two on the closer door. And to Kate, the, don't forget Kate. You can have him. <laughs> so, He's been so, so useful so, already. So the the say the top door and the bottom door. Who's going to go to the top, top door? Is Fen and me. The bottom okay. door is the other three. Okay, got it. Fair so enough. who's who's pushing open the uh, the door? For the I'll top? push it open. Kane's okay. probably stronger than I am. Okay. <laughs> you can have the the wizard do it or whatever he is. Yeah, he'll push it open. Yeah, Kane will push it open when it comes around to that. <sighs> so this door opens into essentially a forty by forty cube s room. Oh, they have the far two end. Far end is a door. Another bronze door. Oh, there we go. Another okay. Key. All right. There is a bronze mirror. It appears to be over, uh, hanging on the wall, the far wall from you. And there's a bunch of uh, uh, piles of like uh, tattered remains of different types of maybe would have been clothing at one time. You're not 100% sure. Hmm. But Hanging off of some of these picks are definitely clothing. There are purple robes, and they appear to be fine and intact. This room also has paintings of Earthland wizards doing terrible things to elves. That is, you know, the plaster is peeling and, and cracking and falling apart and falling to the floor. Okay. We shall go to the other Room. So they're separate. Hmm. When you push this door open directly in front of you, it goes in and in the hall directly. There's like a, a curtain. So open the door five feet, a curtain, and it stretches off to your left. And it looks like it's going in. The room goes in, in, a, in, a, in a half circle. Um, the tapestry, of course, as you would imagine, uh, pictures uh, Earthland would can only be construed as wizards torturing and doing other terrible things to, you guessed it, elves. elves. So, we'll go back up to the top. What would you two like to oh, do? We're not, so, uh, when we hear that there's two rooms, we got <laughs> yeah. side on one, but the doors are open. These doors were side by side, but they opened to different rooms? No, mm -hmm. they were a couple feet apart. Right? Yeah, they weren't, like, butted yeah. up against each other. There's definitely, like, probably, I don't know, Four what do you, Fen? Do what do you think? Let's us delay in the hall and let them look in the other room before we do anything. Yeah, we can poke our heads out. Um, hey, we got purple robes in here. We got okay. a curtain. We got to look behind the curtain because it's Luciano's job. He's just going to Looks share the, the messages curtain. back and forth. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. uh, check the check it out. We'll we'll hold right here. I I will um, push on the on the curtain with my staff. Okay, it pushes in and then hits wall. Okay, is there a line? Is there a, an opening in where I can kind of scoop it, kind of move it out of the way, and look at the wall behind it? Ah, yeah, definitely. You can because right. like it butts up right where the door where the door comes in. There's like a wall right there, so there's it like an entry, and then okay. it directly goes to the left. So there's a the hallway that goes to the left. Isn't the left the this, the left is towards the other door, right? No, it's the opposite way. Opposite way. Okay, left is away from mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. There is also, when you look to your left in here, what appears to be another, well, you don't know that there's a bronze, well, you did tell each other, what appears to be a bronze mirror over there <clears throat> as well. A bronze mirror? A, appears to be. It's either a bronze mirror or just a big old sheet of bronze. Don't look. It's, it is very, um, <laughs> it's aged, right? 
so it doesn't have the shiny reflection Tarnished. of a high polish. So you'd have to get kind of close to it for the reflection to start, right? Okay. So I don't want to see go. it. No, because this is an ultimate Tim trap. I have looked in so many mirrors of opposite alignment in my life. <laughs> I don't do that. Just yeah, stop. Uh, I'm more like a teleport you and me look in a mirror type of person. Yeah, that's true yeah. too. Yeah. So, okay. How far down do we see it go? The curtained hallway? And it's basically, think of it as, this would probably be a better way to describe it. The room is, the door opens up. The room is 30 feet by 40 feet long. Okay. The curtain right in front of you starts at basically 10 feet, and there oh. is a bump in the middle of the room that the curtain is going along. Hmm. Okay. So instead of it making the only thing keeping it from being a complete rectangle is the fact that there's that bump along the wall right where you're at. I got it. Okay. There's a mirror in there. No. I say we go. Is there a mirror on your side? Yes. Yeah. The yeah, robes are only human too. size. You gonna go in there and check them out? What the the the, the mirrors? No. No, no. The the robes. Luton's talking about the robes Sh in the other one. Sure. I, I mean, they're in real good shape, which is weird because this is a really old place. Yeah. It is are is the mirror hanging on the wall or is no, it? No, it's big and heavy. It's setting. It's like it's resting on the floor and against the wall. Don't All right, can I can I pull some of the curtain down? The one in front of you, you sure can. You look at it. You look at the curtain, and as you look up, there's a there's a bronze rod and there's bronze uh, circular uh, uh, curtain rings, and okay. you you look at them. You know, if you were tall enough, you could open those up and take down this curtain. But this I'm not all enough. Awesome curtain of Earthland torturing elves. Because right. you know, something you want in your house. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bonfire right in front of the bronze mirror. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna waft the smoke up so it's covered in soot so it's not reflective at all. That's what my goal is. Okay. I don't want any reflection you got there. you well, the, the, the bonfire is gonna burn pure. It's just heat and, and light, basically fire. It's not really producing because it has no it no. There's no real fuel to it. It's magical fire. You okay, know well I mean? I'll cut I'll cut a section of curtain off and throw that. That's what I'm talking about. That's my man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's so just waiting for me to cut that curtain. Now I'm in trouble. Well, okay. that are the old clothes in the floor in the other room. So so you go right. You take your knife out and you're like. <clears throat> It's a and you can't seem to cut it at all. Magic. Although it feels brittle and dry, like it should be easy to cut and maybe easy even to burn. Maybe if I had a magic blade, it would do it. But okay, but, we are dealing with eldritch but, sorcery, unnaturalness. But there's a lot of rotty clothes in our in yeah, our old room. clothes on the floor. But they yeah. may not be rotty. I can't even cut this rotten curtain. Oh, well. There are some rotten robes in the other room. Because there was, picture like 12 pegs on the wall, right? right? Yeah. And three of them have robes that are intact and look fine. Beneath on the ground are the <laughs> remains of what look like rotten robes that have decayed. They're all the only reason sense. that you can kind of tell that is because the rot has a blue kind of look to it. I mean, okay. not blue, purple. All right. Okay, let's grab one of those and throw that on the fire. Okay. It burns and it, yeah, sure. I will I will say that you're able to, uh, with that ingenuity, to you see how smart up we are with mirrors that in this. What's, in our world. what's up the mirrors? Hey, if you're what's looking at the mirror, mirror, you want to know what you're looking at. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So at least our mirror is not reflective. Let's move the curtains. Or can I slide them on the ring? You can totally slide them on the ring, and then you see the stone beneath. 
Is somebody going to go up and make sure that their reflection is not in the mirror? Go really inspect it. I want to go look at it at an angle to see if I <laughs> to see if I see the rest of the room reflected. Oh man. Okay, so this is what we're going to do just to see how because this is a really great idea. As hell. This is a really great idea. It basically, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna do it this way. You get to roll, Tim. You get to roll two d twenty. I'm gonna roll one d twenty, and your two have to beat my one. Okay, here we go. Well, wait, 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 wait. What about all the schmutz? Don't I get yes, a bonus? Why, that's why I'm giving roll. you two. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You can do this. You've got points to spend. I'll let you spend points on this. Yeah, you got you, you got three. Yeah. yeah. See. I want to go with just advantage. Okay. You got. I am going to. Head first into the mouth of the spirit. I rolled a 17 high and a 12. Ah, you got it. Okay, it schmutzed up fine. You're good. No worries. <laughs> yeah. What are you guys doing in another room? <laughs> not, not looking. You can't, like, just ignore looking into the mirror. Uh, yeah. It's, it's like, totally okay. You could go across the entire room to the other door and it, you wouldn't even have to look at so the there's only three robes and there's four of us so there's uh, two rooms two rooms. no robe robes oh there's three only... correct yeah there's three robes for five of you don't forget k I, I, sorry but they're all human size robes right yeah k, so we'd have to stand that? on top of each we'll other's shoulders we're gonna tell him to put one on k takes one of the now this looks this looks interesting you think i should yes Okay. Try it he, on. He puts yeah. it on. Because there's some ceremonial th purpose that's needed and it's, beyond the it's, next door. They're they're purple robes with a hood, and they're they're trimmed in black. And there's a swirling black design on the chest. It sounds like Thariston or yeah. That's what I was thinking God. of immediately. Immediately upon hearing of the purple, it sounds like either one of the two, Thariston or the Elder Elemental God. Does it, does it look good on me? Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's you. Does the robe hang Excellent. long like it covers his hands? Yeah. The sleeves are long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they cover his hands. So if he's touching something below freezing, it doesn't freeze him. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he turns he, he So I wonder what's going on with your friends in the other room. Um, do, you, uh, do you feel like stabbing anybody now that you're wearing that? No. Why would I stab uh, okay. anyone? Okay, good. Uh, why don't we take the other two? <laughs> Let's get. Let's just put them in a bag. All right, that sounds good. We'll take the other two. Let's get the other two in here. I think this is the room with the the robes. It sounds. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's hope that the third key opens this one. Yeah, Cage, okay, you have something on your face. Perhaps you should look in the mirror to get rid of that. No. <laughs> hey, do you need me to schmutz He's up? He's kind of dumb. Hold on. No, we're just not gonna. Oh, okay. Jesus! Wow, I couldn't do that twice if I tried. Did you roll a one? No, I rolled two fives. <laughs> nice. He he goes, do I? And he walks over to the mirror. Oh, hold on. Now I got to roll a seven. So. <laughs> Let's see. You got to remember what I've been trying to get rid of him the whole time. Yeah, he's going to his soul's going to be sucked in. And then a soul of a greater demon's going to go into him. Okay. So he starts to like, oh, my, and gets weak in the knees. But then he puts his hands over his eyes and collapses to the ground and goes, Whatever you do, don't look in that mirror. It almost. How about that? Hmm. What did you oh. see? I felt as if my soul was being sucked out of my body. Yeah. <laughs> and you tried to do that to me. And what you... are you talking? Me? I did no such thing, sir. Tim, we do that all along. Never look in a mirror ever, anywhere. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's it's D and D. It's D and D based knowledge. You never look in a mirror. <laughs> Well, hey, if good someone landing. has that third key, I'm willing to try and open this here door. Good for you. Yes. Uh, go ahead there. Uh, open it up. We'll get the mage hand to, did the mage hand expire at this point? Yeah, it had to. It's good yeah, for a you minute. could cast it again, though. It's, it's No, nah, just let him do it. Let him do it. He's on a roll. Yeah. Let him do it. <laughs> so, he, so, he's volunteering. He's got the... He's got the, he may have the enthusiasm, to, right. He's got, he's got the he, robe on. Maybe nothing yeah, will he's happen. He's got the robe on. He's got a lot of confidence He just looks now. like so willing to do this. Yeah, right. let, him, just, let him do it. He There's defeated no good the soul reason if, if Will is letting him do this. Just saying. He puts the key and he turns it to the right. It goes click. There you go. And nice. he pushes it open. Nice. Which opens into a large circular nice. chamber. Here we go. 
Now this is wow. This is going to be pretty. Ooh, I this got a is probably like. Thank you. Me too. It's oh. got to be a, a radius of probably what's that? A hundred and twenty feet. So two forty diameter. Holy jeez. So there are a total of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pillars. I don't like in, being on extra planar places. So four of the pillars are in the very center of the room. Got it. The other pillars are on the outskirts of the other eight. I got it. Equidistant. Are on the outskirts of the of the circular. Almost like an eight sided die. Yeah, I got it. The the other door from the other room does lead in here as well. So got it. just so you know. Yeah. You, you you see that and there is a alcove into the um into the to the stone and hanging in this alcove it's almost as if a, a, a valet's key storage you know you've seen it where they take the keys and they put it on and there's all these hooks and all, there's all these things but hanging on these are bronze medallions about yay big and each one of them has a rune carved into them eight of them mm. Well, there's more than actually. There's more than eight. There's twelve. On, there's twelve discs. Oh, all on, even on if, the four in the middle. Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So the thanks, Bones. Inside the four pillars in the center, it appears that there is a divot or a hole that goes in. This is what you can tell, and it looks looks as if there are just like you know how on the outside when you put that tablet in to the door there is impressions circular small circular impressions on the uh pillars for us to put the discs in it would so appear there's 12 discs and four holes for the discs is no there's tw there's 12 12 indentations one on okay. each of the pillars too what could go at wrong? this point at this point Cade speaks up oh and says well, I have to say thank you very much for bringing me all this way, but it does not appear that my my colleague has come here at all. I think I think it's unfortunately been a just a, a waste of your time. I appreciate it. We can go back now. <laughs> no. We need no, to aren't you curious? Now. Curious? Not at all, sir. This is obviously leading to some sort of Vecna shenanigans that I do not <laughs> care to take part in. That is not what I thought you would say. <laughs> well, well, now that he knows where it's at. Check on him. So, what's going on with this? Is he like? He, does he really want to go home? You guys or can is this do. A ruse? You guys can roll insight checks, which is a wisdom based. I don't think any of you, although. I got a plus Jim one. might have insight. Yeah, I, I, you might uh, you might be trained. No, I have survival, nature, athletics, religion. Okay, so I basically, what do. you roll is you roll a d twenty, and you're going to add whatever your wisdom modifier is, unless you, you got a plus are one. trained in a skill, then you get to add your proficiency. Got so, it. And you're going to be going against whatever Fen, he's doing. Fen, you got if three. Right Wait, uh, can I also do bardic inspiration? Yeah, you can do bardic inspiration. Yeah, I'm going to do bardic inspiration on this too because it's for ability checks as well. Okay, okay. You have to place it on one of your fellas for it. Uh, so, ben, so that you said you had the highest. Go okay. for it. So Great. Going against Go Let's see. How many points do I have left? You have 10. Okay, good to know. <laughs> you suck. Fen's got three. <laughs> uh, I have yeah. something I want to do too. Okay, okay. 2K. What? Well, they're all thinking. Uh, does this happen before or after the rolls? You tell them. Well, it depends what you're what you're trying to do. I and have he... serp uh, serpents hypnotic sight. I want to look at him and talk to him. Oh, you want to try and hypnotize? Look him. it in his eyes and go trust in me. <laughs> okay, let's uh, say this can kind of kind of happen almost all at the same time. You guys go ahead and roll your insights. Oh, jeez. Okay, what's 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 the saving throw he's got to make on the hypnotize? Let's take a look. Says he needs a natural twenty. No, yeah. It does. It does. Oh no, no, <laughs> within twenty feet. Excuse me. There uh, you go. There's a twenty in there. <laughs> uh, charisma saving throw versus my spell DC. Ooh, charisma. That's tough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
My spell okay. DC is only 13, though. Yeah. All right. He's going to roll. Trust in me. Well, well, of course I trust in you, sir. You, you, you're a good man, and he pats you on the head. <laughs> he goes, I don't think I would touch anything. Did you guys make your rolls? I, I fail. I rolled a three. Okay. What would you roll, Finn? Um, I rolled a 23 without the bardic. Oh. Wow. Holy <laughs> crap. Yeah, okay. So I rolled an okay. 18, and then I, I've got a, a plus Something is definitely a miss. Jeez. Insight. Well, you know there's something completely off about him. Big so people you always just, want to get into more trouble. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you've got a big bad feeling about this in general, but he's provoked nothing. He, but there's, yeah, there's something up. There's he something. wants to leave to have us killed so he can come back in here and do the thing. Yeah, is is he is he trying to get like have us go back so he can be alone here? Or you is can't this really like... tell that, but you definitely can tell the fact that he's not. He's not telling you everything. So when he says, thank you, and we're all done here because my friend's not here, that's not really what he's thinking. Yeah. Not at all. The friend the friend is never here in the first place. It's all BS, probably. Well, there was a sign that somebody had made its way here. Somebody had been here before. It's probably his underling. You were able to see that. You were able to see that. Okay. You just didn't know who it was. That was that ghost attacking him. Was His, his yeah. friend got sent to his death. Maybe you tried to have him open all the keys and stuff, and he just didn't make it past this. And then when he never came but back, there's he no figured, now body I go. here. That's odd. No, it's not. The shambling mound ate it. Oh, and by the way, when you opened up the doors in here, mm -hmm. that shadow on the floor. Yeah. When you opened up the first, I probably should have said this. It would have been entertaining. When you opened up those first doors, the shadow flowed into that room. Those yeah, so two rooms. That's him. That's him. So when uh -huh. you opened up the last door into the room with the pillars, the shadow then flowed into this right. room. Right. So basically, we're letting slowly, the shadow. Slowly, that's the spirit. Yeah. Get her all. Get that's all the, the place. Or, or that's the, some evil greater thing that needs to come in here to get discified back into physical form. Yeah, I think he hired us so that we would let him in here. Well, if you think we should just be opening up things, I mean, I'm game to put a couple of discs in something if you want. I think it's time to roll for initiative. Oh, you're going to attack him? Don't you oh think it's God. time to kill this guy? No, no, oh, wait. man, he's so done nothing so, so did you did you fail in the hypnotism? Yeah, he failed. Uh, he saved. He saved. He's been I, nothing but nice. Hasn't attacked anybody. Hasn't done no, anything. No, I don't. Wrong. I don't think we should. Uh, no, I. I, I am. We got to decide if we want to do, do. We first of all do what. Uh, this is the last room, obviously. We got to figure out what to do. We want to do this. So I will say, moving forward from this point, everything you say is in your character's voice. Got There's it. No talking in between characters. This is you have to say right. what you're saying in front of him. Right. Right. Got it. I Are say you sure telepathically. You Daphne sting that guy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Are you sure you okay. don't want to like put a few discs in just to see what happens? <laughs> I said I would. I mean, if you want to try, but oh no, not us. Okay. Like, why don't you go ahead? Like, we got all the way here. All right, if you want me to. Okay, so he he's willing to put a disc in do you, do you want to let him put a disc in or you want to sting him right now when he reaches for one sting him i mean i told daphne to sting him. Okay. i don't care what anyone else says wait before he does that do we recognize or does luciano recognize any of the ruins on these things uh mm. do you have arcana i do you have arcane go ahead and roll it's gonna be high it's on a plus three you, just, you got two regulars dude all right, uh, 10, 11, 13 total. Yeah, just um, use them up. They have something to do with planar travel. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cast uh, Prestidigitation on one of them to make it look like a different one and make sure he uses that one. Yeah, well, he's getting stung before that. Oh, I'm looking for her in here. Daphne's on your character sheet. Yeah, she gets a plus four okay. to hit. Okay, I'll allow you. I'll, you get the roll. Go ahead. Oh, we're attacking. Yeah, he's yeah. just trying to incapacitate him. Gula, gula, gambale, 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 gula. 
13 plus what plus four 17 plus whatever she gets for her attacks i don't know okay so she gets plus four to her sting to hit so and you roll the 13 so 17 right yes okay 17 does hit him uh she needs to make a dc 11 constitution saving throw or be poisoned and then he's unconscious if he's poisoned. He got a nine. He got one reroll. So he's poisoned for uh, one hour because he fails. He didn't do it by five or more. So he doesn't fall unconscious, but he is poisoned. So he goes, and how much damage does he do? So roll your damage. It's 1d4 plus two. Four. 1d4 plus two. Four. Four. Or, oh, that's right. I almost forgot something. <laughs> so the goes to sting him. And as a reaction, a blue force field surrounds him. <laughs> and it, it it keeps, prevents the, the, the sting. But he is aware. It's like, oh, no, your dragon's attacking me, sir. Daphne, how dare you? Get away from him. She must be scared. She gets a little skittish when she's nervous. I understand. I'm nervous and scared, too. I think I'm going to depart, if you don't mind. And he starts inching towards the door. Well, let's get... And we're like, well, if you're leaving, we're all leaving. I'm fine with that. I'm ready to leave and go back to my to the university. I mean, I agreed to... Uh, if you insisted to uh, put these discs in, I would, but... No, it's just planar travel. You said planar travel, right, Loot? Did you tell him that, Loot? I'm going to express that. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I mean, planar travel. I don't have any desire to travel no planes, sir. We gotta lock the doors on the way out. Re undo everything we did coming in. Perhaps we can be able to pull that stone off of the front door. Maybe it'll let us close it. So. What's a, what's the group think? What's everyone's opinions? <laughs> well, I mean, well, it's we all know we know sus, Tim's but... opinion. <laughs> we need to kill him and kill everything in the area, especially those people outside. We can we drown him in the swamp; nobody will find him. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what his angle is with all this. He's not what he appears to be. My he's guess deceptive is deceptive and a, a liar. No, 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 no. My guess is he's an extra planer or some other type of creature. Because that 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 shield is not natural. There's no right. I should Seems maybe like I should know this. Uh, I think he's not uh, what he appears to be. I think he's visually not who he is. I think he's something else. Do we have any way to like dispel his whatever image he has on him, or like to see if he's, you know? Well, it's obvious. Whatever he has seems to only be activated by attacks. Right, which is pretty he's come in contact with people and touched people and that didn't right. do nothing he does wear a couple of rings yeah, <sighs> yeah. I don't know or you could just say contract fulfilled he'll pay you the rest of your fee and you guys go back to willow isle i say we remove some of the medallions though you're gonna take them you're gonna slide a handsome stuff into your bag slip them out of here and throw them in the swamp somewhere Hmm. Oh, that may be a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea at all. Because remember, everything you say is in front of them now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this is obviously a place of evil. Exactly. That's why I should be shut up. Who knows what happens if you throw those things out there? I say the king of King of Keeland needs to be informed about this place so we can send in an army and do something about it. Army. Why do we need an army? I mean. We made know. it here just fine. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think touching anything in here is, is wise. So well, this gonna touch goes against my code. Though. So this sounds like it could be a, tele a, 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 a teleporter in to open a gate to let stuff in. Fine, give yes. me one. I'll try it out. We'll see what happens. I'm telling you. Anyone you want to hand me. Here, hand it to me. I'll see what happens. I'll what? hand it to you. How worse I what could happen with one? Damn. It's do it. We gotta know. We have to know. I can't be in I, the dark. I disguise it. I use press the digitation. I alter the appearance of it, whichever okay. one we give him. So you hand you hand him a disc, right? Yeah. Okay. 
And then he goes up and he goes to one of the pillars and he puts it in and it spits it right back out and it lands on the floor. He grabs it and he puts it in and spits it back out and puts it on the floor and picks it up. Because he's putting it in the wrong one. See, it doesn't even work. I think it's time to kill him. No. Why would you want to kill me, sir? We don't need to kill. We don't need to kill anyone. <laughs> we don't. Awful good. I see I've made a mistake cable. This is fantastic. He starts, he starts inching closer and closer to Jim. I think you're right. I don't, don't think we need to kill me at we all. We don't need to kill anyone. Look. I thought you said that you were in contact with some higher spirit, sir. Yes. Not, well, ask good. your higher spirit if I uh, attend you any ill will. Let him put the right one in one pillar. Let's see what happens and then go on from there. I need to know. I need to know. It's what? What? It, what how bad could it be? <laughs> yes, just give me a right one. I see. Obviously, you did something wrong with the last one you handed me. I don't know where all this underhandedness is coming from. <laughs> um, Ben is gonna um wrap a little bit of fabric around her hand, and she's gonna inch over to um the medallions while they're talking. She's just gonna try to slide a hand one. Okay. Uh, give me a stealth check. You guys have noticed, because I'm assuming you all went and, and looked around the room, correct? Mm -hmm. In the center of those four pillars in the at the very core, the center of the room, it's a hole that goes down. Yeah, and in the dark, we don't see how far. And you don't see how exactly. You have no idea. That's just going to release some kind of demon or something. It's no big deal. All right, let's... <laughs> well, does that black stuff go down there? Yeah, it's starting to creep over there. It's starting to... <laughs> Let's do one of the outer ring ones and, uh, you know. Will, so. <clears throat> also, I'm going to try the same thing with stealth. I get a plus five on that. Okay. That's going to be a plus six, actually. Okay, just let me with know the, which, which your totals would you get? Jack of all trades. I got a 10. <laughs> okay. It's going to be 18. 18. So this is what happened. So Fen goes over there, like, all. Oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> and, like, clink, clink, clink. <laughs> And then Luke goes, like, oh, oh, here, let me help you put those back. And you pocket one <laughs> in doing so. It's like, there's one missing. You must have took it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am so clumsy. I'm sorry. Yeah, but Luke, you got one. Just glad I could be of assistance. Well, uh, Jim, I'm, I'm relying on you and your honor to, to get me back safely. All right, let's, so let's put one in the right, right and then we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll go. My All curiosity. Right. Do you wish me to do it? Sure. I position behind him as he's doing that with my yeah. dagger. You guys can all get. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will stand out him, there near the pillar. You hand him one. And he goes, well, the outside which, pillars. Okay. Is it which one's the right one? So I just try each one until. It's try done. one. Try one. Okay. He goes over to one and he puts it in one and it boop, pops it out. All right. Well then, yeah, we're not messing with this then. Do we all agree then? We're not going to mess with this. Can they be broken? It's not. Yeah, it's not broken. Apparently, it's, it's been here for eons. No, could the discs be broken? Oh, possibly. I don't know. Well, let's. I'll hurl one down and see if I can break it. Oh, to the, I, I hurl it on the ground. I just yeah. bang. Ding, 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 ding. It does, does, it down, does it fall down the hole? You can kick it over there or throw it down the hole if you want. Can I do an insight? Yeah, I'm going to throw one down the hole. Trying to destroy this to see what the <laughs> okay what the wizard. Is did you just throw one down the freaking hole? Sure <laughs> Are so you hold on. stupid? So, 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 it's, Ben, I'm it sorry. It's his you alignment. Say? What'd you say? Oh, it fits his alignment. I watch the wizard as, um, sorry, uh, Tim's character is attempting to destroy these, this medallion. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yo, you're just when it watching him. He's he looks nervous as shit right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, what he chucks one over and it falls down the hole he looks oh my like he looks like really like afraid did and it then, fit perfectly oh no that hole the in, hole's in huge the floor, it's big it's very oh, okay it's your, oh, it comes a type yeah, six demon. all of you all of you could jump in it at the same time and fall to your desk. so uh you throw that over and you hear it cling, 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 as it starts going down 
And then you hear <laughs> and like a ball of energy appears where that hole is inside those four uh Yeah, you pillars. just summon something you Genius. I need all of you to roll a uh roll and add your wisdom um to the to the d20 yeah, roll. That's not a good yeah, idea to do that. Don't do that again. I'm using my I'm using my final two regular hero points. Okay. Uh everyone's got them. Yeah, I'm using mine too, but it's not really gonna all three. I used something. up all mine already. Ooh, yes. 19 on the roll, plus one for Jack of all trades. Ooh, okay. So you'll see. 12 plus I'm two in, you, and another one okay. for, so I rolled a 15. You Just see. Just a seven. Okay, you don't notice. What about? I, uh, I get a plus no. one for my wisdom, and I'm going to add three hero points. Okay. Your final three, yeah. We're all out now. Yeah. Uh, this is total plus four. That's 15 total. Okay, so you see. So the only one who doesn't see is Fed. Okay, when you chuck that down and this thing goes boom, boom. Uh, Cade runs. <laughs> he Ooh. runs out the door and he's hauling ass. Oh. I think we should follow him. I agree. All right, let's go. Ben, I pull out my broom. Hop on. Let's go. You got a broom okay. flying? Yeah, he's got a broom flying. All, All this right. time, you can be flying around and you're not? Oh my god! He could have flown over the mist and everything. <laughs> So the question, oh, no, never mind. I'm not going to ask that. Okay, so you guys all follow him? I'm going to I'm gonna relock yeah, the door. Sure. I can hold 400 pounds. Hey. But... <laughs> but yeah, we got to relock the doors. That was part of the plan. Oh, God. Well, not when you're yeah. chasing somebody. It wasn't yeah, the J I'm not, anyway. I'm not chasing them. Charging I'm gonna... up. No, we're just trying to get out. Okay, so basically what will happen is, is like you guys will catch him as he gets outside, and he's getting outside, and he's yelling, Belosa, the Rook, they're trying to kill me. Great. And they're going to come and run it. Oh, the other two. Yeah. So you got, then you got Jim down there locking the doors and whatnot. And <laughs> Good custodian. Sure, yeah, being custodial. And then, are you, what are you going to do with the keys, Jay? I'm going to keep them. Okay. Okay. So you have all three of the keys. Yeah, I'm going to keep the keys. Okay. So you've got the keys. All right. And Lutano has one medallion i believe he has one disc correct yeah, i can't yeah. believe you threw that down there you dumbass <laughs> well we had to see what happens you guys were unsuccessful doing anything unlike <laughs> most 5e he's playing his alignment to a t yeah i guess so <laughs> ah. okay wow. so you guys get outside you've got uh uh, Ferocia, uh, whatever the hell that lady's name is in the root coming up and you guys coming out Except for me, because I can't. Is, so I can't. Except for you, you, it's going to be a little bit before you get That's up there. Fine. Is there going to is there going to be a combat? Is there going to be a fight? No. Okay. He's possessed. We, we weren't chasing him to kill him. So he just goes and he stands next to them. They take their weapons out. Yeah, he he ran, and that was a good idea. <laughs> yeah. And he's behind the root. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got plans for them. <laughs> The swamp has plans for them. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, Jay, I think this is the time, though. It's the time limit, right? Yeah, we're close. So, yeah, so we're, yeah, we're at the yeah. time. So I think this is where we're going to have to end it. Well, oh. man, can I do what I was going to do first? No, well, that's what you were going to do. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm I'm sorry. Maybe maybe if you're nice, maybe we'll play again. I mean... <laughs> Uh, All right. We'll see what happens. We'll see if Beckton's coming up inside that thing. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, there you go. That was that was definitely entertaining and fun. And we still oh, we're left in the anyway, dark. We can get away because the four of us hobbits, we don't weigh 400 pounds. No. So I can fly us out of here. But yep. don't worry, I'm going to cast Bonfire on their boat about three or four times. Where's Milo? And then they'll have to make their way back with no Yeah, boat. we got Milo, Milo too. Milo didn't come. Milo, Milo didn't, didn't come. No. Yeah. But he's on the boat. We convinced no. him. Oh, no, no, you didn't. You didn't convince him not, not to. That's right. Loot, uh, was it, uh, no, uh, Phil convinced him not to go because yeah, it's yeah, too yeah. valuable. Yeah. 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 So we'll burn them all up and, and they'll have to make their way no. back so, without a guide. The, the moral of the story is don't screw with your flan crap ever again. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> I agree. Great idea. Wow. Very good idea. Okay. All right. So, well, that's. What that if we had thrown two down there? 
Oh, jeez, Tim. My God. Wow, that would have been <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I wonder what See, now you got to go back and throw two down. Did you actually figure out what happens if something falls down there? Oh, yeah. I know oh. what's going on. Okay. So, uh, why don't we uh, shout out everyone? Uh, Definitely chaotic evil. See what's uh, everyone's got in store or part of the community. You know, if you want to just talk about that real quick, and uh, while I set up the final for the giveaways, because we got some really good stuff today. I so. think whatever bad beings are angry because I ruined that disc. I don't know if you ruined it or not. I think you're in already, Chris. No, you know, no, you probably didn't. It's probably gonna be back where it was. It's probably gonna be. Bofin says toss them all down. Yeah, yeah. Well, like he always. Yeah, no, don't listen ever to Bofin. Come on. Voice of reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the voice of yeah. <laughs> yes, the voice of reason. Fool of a took. I thought of the same thing. Yeah, Rob. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, Alex, uh, uh, what do you got going on, man? Uh, not much. I mean, you know me, work, work, work. I would love to get back into doing more creative work, but that has not been an opportunity. I will be playing with uh, Rob Phantom and Jay and Embers of the Empire again at the end of this month, April 28th. It's all good. Yay. Appreciate that, man. Thanks for playing. We got a lot going on in the community, too, so going to be a lot of stuff. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, it appears Ed will not be coming to Page, by the way. That did not work out. So just so oh. you're aware. But that's all right. That's that's in January. It's so far off. So, right. uh, Tim, what's going on, dude? Well, speaking of Paige, I have somebody designated to make sure I don't uh, do anything too late to miss going to Paige. Yeah, who's that? Who would that be? <laughs> Alex is going to make sure that I don't miss any timeline for that. Good. We'll be fine. Because, we'll yeah, fine. that's why he's ever mysterious. So, oh, where's Tim? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the and agreement then, was we play Rovers of the Barons game while we're there, right? Ooh, yeah. yes, that sounds a great idea. We'll get some, uh, yeah, we'll have to, uh, you know, once tickets open up shortly, we'll make sure everyone gets them that goes for that. And it'll be, like I said, that's right before Gary Khan. It's in January, second one ever. So, Tim, what about anything else? You got any plans for DMing anytime in the near future? Yeah, I'd like to, I w wanted to do a uh, city state uh, in uh, June. Uh, okay, well, it can be the first week in June or last weekend in June. We'll so. have to check with the fellas also, I guess. Huh? And and Courtney, yeah, we'll have to check. Yeah. We'll, we'll get that. I, I imagine we can make that happen. Uh, I'm in 100% on that. So, yeah, that would be awesome. Fantastic <laughs> idea. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, I, um, I'm going pleasure. to have a lot of opportunity in July for gaming and run, running games. Because uh, uh, your wife and son are going away to France. Correct. So how do I know to that? Visit, to visit. I know that. Uh, so I'll be like geographical bachelor. All right, cool. <laughs> That'll work. Awesome. Uh, Ashley, thanks for playing. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Ashley. You may know me as Minnesota Muse. Uh, you can find me on Tuesdays. Uh, on Guild Superior's Twitch channel for Heroes of Greyhawk, um, where I play a very problematic character. is very fun. Um, and then I DM Thursday nights on their channel uh, for my campaign, The Undying Sky, which is also my Oops All Warlocks campaign, um, where <laughs> all cool. my players have entered into an agreement with a dark entity. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Why? Uh, uh, oh yeah, warlocks are all bad, right? Is that Superior? No way. They're not all bad. Oh. That's a misconception. Okay. They didn't really have a choice. It was like, <laughs> to die in this under crypt, or do you, would you like to um, form a deal? Yeah, well, deal, yes. They're Let's making a make pact for power. Deals, yeah, deal or hit face the wheel. <laughs> oh, wrong movie. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, so they're having a good time, and that's running until the end of May. And awesome. then I'm taking my summer off, because, you know, I live in Minnesota, at Minnesota Muse, um, and I like to see the summer yes occasionally when it's there right yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely fantastic to hear and thank you so very much i hope you had a good time here with us crazy old guys here so absolutely uh, excellent <laughs> will hey everybody i'm will uh giant stop Dvorak. uh uh, basically, there's my Patreon, uh, which, oh, thank you very much. Uh, it, uh, I put stuff on there all the time. There'll be the next Monk 5e archetype will be going up uh, hopefully later today, if not, probably tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, I'm currently uh, I'm back working on, I've 
trying to get some more headway on the Lost City of the Sewell adventure that I've been writing. Um, I kind of uh, neglected it for a little while with Gary Khan and different stuff, so it's time to. And I did, I did put out the uh, Dimry Guide to Dimry, which is free yes. on the Patreon. Uh, so that's basically um, that's about it. Just doing, you know, writing as always, and uh, hopefully the spells that I created for the Greyhawk, uh, new Greyhawk. Um, uh, Archmages will be out soon on uh, drive through as well. So fantastic. And we got all these great publications here. And by the way, this is going to be just beyond this giveaway. I got, Will sent me a whole bunch of stuff. So you get your choice of two of these Dragon's Horde, Tomb of Zhang, the Horrific, Echoes of a Dark Past. They're all adventures. The Raven's Rook setting, the book setting, which is, you know, Rook Roost, and then the Mermaid's Blessing. Uh, very, very nice. Well, thank you for your generosity. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Let's uh, let me go here tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, add Will's name to this, and, and Tim, of course, uh, you're welcome for your insight as well on these uh, Gavin discussions. We're going to talk about, about. We haven't done this in a long time. Playable races, species for Greyhawk. What's the difference between old school and five E? Well, you'll find out tomorrow as far as uh, what we utilize in our in our Greyhawk setting. I did a short on it as well, uh, but just note, uh, you know, we'll talk about all the different. Because it's not just your base classes. There are some others, you know. There are some. So we uh, and then we can discuss. So we can go on the five E aspect of it. So that's tomorrow night. That's our Gavin for the week. And then uh, special Battle Tech next Saturday. Eight players. That's going to be awesome. And that's a multi multi session thing. We're just going to start it on. Uh, we're just going to start it next Saturday. That'll be our special game. Nine a.m. Mm-hmm. The Saturday after that, Little Bird, uh, Coco, Brett, and myself playing with Curtis and Champions. That's at ten a.m. Uh, superhero game. That's after that. Then on the eleventh, we're gonna have a new first level, not first, but like third or fourth level in my game. New group for out of Altamira. That'll be on the eleventh of May. We're getting up to cast for that now. Also, Keith Baker on the twenty eighth of April. You know, uh, looking forward to that. He's uh, promoting his new Glim board game, which I played twice at Garycon, which is cool. And then on the eighteenth of May is our great. This is gonna be the big, big one. The crossover event, um, as the two <laughs> two members of the Slav Squad Squad profess their love for each other, and Venerian Vord, Eric Munn's character, says, "Oh, I'll marry you." And they both converted to Ralishaz, which what could go wrong there? And, yeah, no harm could come out yeah, of that. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, just trust me, uh, all the chickens are coming home to roost after five years of Venerian Vord. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Complete chaos. It's yes. Yeah. What could go wrong at this wedding? It's going to be awesome. In Altamira, it's going to be in Vinyamar Gardens, and we're just going to see where it goes. I'm so I'm going to bring out my vi- ultimate vileness and be my awful DM self once again for that. So, all right, here we go. Let's do the giveaway, setting this up, and then we're going to raid into uh, Myriad's on. So we're going to raid into Myriad, part of our stream team, always. Everyone, please, oh, wrong button, wrong button. There's are square creator stream team. They're not just uh, not just uh, D and D channels. There's fa- um, you know there's crafters. Uh, you know some of the play video games like Coco and Bird and and and, and Bones. Uh, always uh, you know check them all out. They're all all great streamers. All right, closing this out. Here we go. The first winner gets their choice of two books from William Henry Dvorak, and then the second one will get a gift certificate. Here we go. First winner. 491 Phantom, you're right there. I see it. Grats. Grats. You win the choice of two books from Will. Um, and then the next Yay. winner is Balfrin. You get the $10 Argus certificate to Troller Games. You're both right there. Isn't that weird? They both just wow. ch- chatted in the last 30 seconds. So awesome. That's good. Yeah, that's right. fantastic. So, Grats, both of you. Uh, 491 Phantom, you can get with me and uh, uh, we can uh, decide which two you want out of the pile here. Uh, we're going to raid into uh, Myriad. Please sit tight for it. Let's go in there. We're over 80. Any final thoughts from everyone? Thanks. This was awesome. First in many uh, guest DMing appearances. So, I wanted a few more minutes. Uh, uh. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's a good stop point. You'll be fine. You got to leave them. Got to leave them wanting more, man. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> man. They did, well, you did a great job. Thank you. I didn't mind even Thank playing you. 5e with 69 point critical first time. I, I mean, how could I go wow. wrong? Right? Yeah, I tell you what, the, uh, you really threw uh, a wrench into a lot of stuff. Well, that's good because what was it? Yeah. Golem with special ability, uh, spell abilities and stuff? No, he was just really tough. Yeah. And that was going to be a tough fight. All right. Well, I'm glad I, glad I got lucky there. 
Luck is sometimes on our no, side. I got lucky. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so here we go. We're, we're going to read into uh, Myriad and then enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow night for a really good discussion, 7 o'clock Eastern. And then we start it off again, four streams again next week. We're, so we're on a roll. So see you all. Uh, see you all soon. Thanks. Appreciate it. Am I going to the wrong button? Probably. Hope so. Am I going to hit the wrong button here? Maybe. All right. Let me set the rate up. Rating into rating into Myriad. If Guild Superior was live doing their session zero, I would have rated into them, but it apparently is not. So. Very kind of you. Of we course. Appreciate the sentiment. Of course. But you completely crippled me, Will. I couldn't use the whistle against anything. Because <laughs> nothing was alive. It had to be. It can't be used against undead or constructs. I know. I told. I told Will a, a plan I was going to do with my spell, and he made sure I couldn't drown it. <laughs> I said, oh, I can pull it underwater, and he's like, oh. Yeah, you can. Nice, 75, five, 78, awesome. Five, four, three, two, one. See you tomorrow night, thanks. We appreciate the support. Oh, my. And then the, uh, the one good spell you gave me, Thunder Wave, would have taken out the rest of the party. I know, that's good stuff. <laughs> So, is it, yeah, you guys, it, I, I do have to say, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, 